Exit out the courtroom, sir, before you find yourself in contempt. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. This judge is so patient and tries to help so much, and he just can't control himself. But first, I would like to take a moment and thank Big Tiff Dog for sending me down this never-ending rabbit hole. I have watched this several times, and it was much more entertaining when I knew a little bit more about the pro se plaintiff in this matter. It seems he's kind of a professional victim, maybe? Maybe just lifelong, maybe not professional, because it doesn't seem like he really gets paid for it. Nothing is ever his fault. The whole world's out to get him. Even the utility company has a conspiracy against him. He shows proof on his public Facebook page as he tells everyone how much he's being extorted for, but he never seems to show the part about how much he owes, which would kind of, you know, explain everything. He also likes to use GoFundMe. He tried to use GoFundMe in order to get paid for this case we're about to hear. And that was before the lawsuit even was filed. This case was amusing enough on its face with just what was going on, but understanding exactly what happened and how it happened kind of added another layer to it. So I am going to read you Mr. Pryor's whole explanation from his GoFundMe. If you want to skip this, I'll put chapters in the description so you can jump ahead and get right to the court. He says, oh, and I just want to add, um, I meant to note where the punctuation is just because there is none. Hello, I'm Anthony, and I recently had a roof replaced from a contractor. It was a complete tear-off and new sheeting and shingles to be installed. Well, my deal with the contractor was to buy all the materials needed and pay him $6,500 labor. So after $7,308.40 in materials and paying the contractor payments of thousands and thousands for months before getting him to finally show up, I think that's how that works. You usually have to pay a good part of it in advance, but... Maybe that's just a Florida thing. I started to pay him in May, and he came in November. And then his crew was on the job for less than three hours the first day, and I caught them stealing shingles off my pile of brand new shingles. Dot, 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 dot. Is it an ellipsis if it has four dots? And is it an ellipsis if it's in writing and not like something you click on? I really need to Google that because I'm really not sure. And I like dots. We know that. And covering them with my brand new plywood then throwing old tear-off materials over that to cover and conceal them. Well, too bad. I am really good with math. Just not grammar, apparently. And I was home when they delivered the shingles. 40 bundles up top and 43 down on drive on pallet. I apologize. I'm trying my best. Well, when I got back home after leaving for a couple of hours, my OCD noticed the stack of shingles was different next to the driveway. Dot, 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 dot. Not how OCD works, by the way, FYI, if anybody wanted to know. So I walk up and around the truck. I, period, we have a period, that's punctuation, but there's an I there and I don't know what that goes to. The driveway and there was a man behind it throwing old shingles in the back of the pickup. But wait, I have a trash trailer right there. Why would you fill your truck? As I was asking this, I seen my plywood in the bed, so I grabbed it. This is really freaking hard to read. OMG, you guys. Although there was debris on top of it, and as I lifted it up, I found six bundles of brand new shingles under my brand new plywood covered in trash tear-off debris. Dot, 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 space, dot, 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 space, dot, dot. Yeah. I then confronted them and was very, very angry and made them unload everything right back out space, dot, 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 space, dot, dot. Well, I called the man I hired and explained to him and assured, he assured me he would handle it, space, dot, 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 dot. Well, after three long days of babysitting and realizing that they were trying to call complete wasn't beside the trash cleanup that was at best that of an adolescent teen, I found nails all over everywhere, I caught them trying to rush through and not replace the plywood on the garage. And then when they did the garage, they did a botched job just cutting full sheets of plywood for no reason and acting as though they weren't licensed or trained. So after, it's usually not only the contractor that's licensed. Is that like a thing in Michigan, like laborers have to get licensed? I don't think it is. So after they finally came six months after I paid the initial labor payment and gave money 
and month of excuses about being backed up on other jobs, I got what I thought was a new roof. So I went in the attic to insulate it and find more problems. See cover picture, the framing nails supposed to be holding my new plywood sheeting to the framing, the truss, well, they are just shot through anywhere. Most you can wiggle and pull straight through. So not securing the sheeting at all, hardly other than mostly gravity. And also when pulling down the retractable stairs, I was avalanched by debris and what used to be almost immaculate, not one nail protruding out, not one piece of trash or debris. I'm assuming he's talking about his attic, and I don't know anybody's attic who can be called immaculate unless it's finished. Anyways, but I went up to a three foot deep dump site. I then contacting them about these issues, they assured one, one would come back and clean it up. And we could talk about the nail issue. I have space, dot, 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 space, dot, 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 space. Well, he never came back. I'm out $13,808.40. Gotta, gotta make sure you throw that 40 cents in there. That is like the pivotal point. And this house has to pass inspection before I can close on my mortgage. I only have a short time and need help. I have contacted multiple lawyers and they want thousands to start a case. I just need this fixed and to go away. Please help. Thank you in advance. We know how generous people are, especially hard times and when you get screwed over. It's a big deal. I was screwed over by a contractor. I still have to handle that. It happens. Sometimes people take your money and they don't do what they were supposed to do. Unfortunately, Mr. Pryor has achieved 0% of his $13,000 goal. I am not able to tell when this GoFundMe was created, but I pulled up the building permit and it appears that everything was complete on November 15th of 2022. And it looks like it was inspected and it passed. So... I'm not really sure what the major issue is here because the inspector didn't see any issues with it. And I'm sure he told the inspector all about the issues with it. But nevertheless, he is very upset about the shoddy work that was done on his roof. And he has sued the contractor who is licensed, although his license was not listed on the building permit, or maybe it just wasn't entered. I don't know. Michigan does things weird. And now we're in court. Here, uh, versus Simon Zaney. Uh, let's see. Two three dash zero two one three three. I think I have your appearance. Your Honor, Warzy, on behalf of Defendant Counterpoint Simon Zaney. Okay, so your uh, appearance for the record. Anthony Pryor. Okay, today's the date and time set for a a bench trial. Uh, I'll be ready to proceed on this matter. Right from the defense perspective, then, yes. You ready to proceed, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, are you calling witnesses today or are you giving testimony for yourself? Testimony for myself. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give us the truth and the whole truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. And you can proceed to give your testimony about your claim. Uh, I go first. Yes, you're, it's, you're the okay. plaintiff, so you, it's your burden. All right. Um, well, back in 2022, in the beginning of the year, I began to plan to put a new roof on my home that I had just purchased at the end of 2021. And I um, was looking around, called a few people, uh, got some people to come out, give me some estimates. And I ended up going into a local party store close by my home and it was owned by the defendant and he had mentioned to me that he could do the roof for me so i because of my long-standing knowledge of who these people were and understanding that they've been in business for a lot of years um i don't know whether the construction part has been in business or auto sales or whatever i've actually relevant to i have I have history. Uh, I have history. With so let me give you a, a instruction. If there's an objection, you'll stop so that I can address the objection. Okay. Relevance as to the nature and scope of the history of his knowledge of relationship. Okay. Um, I'm going to overrule it and let him give his spiel. It, that's what gave me the trust behind knowing that I would probably be okay using them is the trust behind the, the 
than knowing who they were. But um, I went ahead and told them, come over, give me an estimate. We came to an agreement that it'd be $6,500 labor if I went and bought all the materials. And so I had started buying materials. Um, one of my first receipts was actually in, I believe, May um, and then August. And then again in November, I, I just was buying materials throughout the time of us connecting. Um, originally, he said it'd be a few weeks out. And this was in May uh, when I had made my first original payment to him, um, which I have the documentation for all the payments that were sent to the defendant for the, the labor. Um, the first time I made a payment, he had said it'd be a couple of weeks before I could get over onto my job. And then a couple of weeks go by and I had gotten some communications between him and I. And he says, well, I've got a couple other projects. It'll be probably next month. And this happened throughout the summertime. And I wasn't in a huge rush. So I allowed it to happen because I was still going through buying materials anyways. Um, I had stopped at a place that he referred me to, ABC Supply. I went in there to go purchase my uh, stuff back in like June or July uh, for the roof. And they said, well, actually, do you have a date in which it's going to be installed? Objection here, sir, your honor. The objection sustains. You can't tell me what someone else said. Okay. They requested that I come back and purchase them. Just continue that objection. Here, sir. You, you changed it to requested and asked. It's semantics is still the same thing. You're trying to tell me what someone else said no. that's not present in court. When I went to purchase the materials for the roof, the, the shingles, the actual shingles, the 80, mm -hmm. however many bundles of shingles that I needed, 85 is I think what the exact number that I purchased. I was told that I needed to- Objection, you're saying. Okay, so you can't tell me what you was told. You need, but apparently when you when you purchased was a requirement for you to- There give, was a requirement to for give me them, to wait until- You didn't let me finish my yes, question. Sorry. So she has, she has to take down a record. Anytime you talk over me, she can't make out what's being said. So I'm just trying to help you out here. When you went to purchase the shingles or the materials, uh, did you have to give a date for when the service was going to begin? I, I didn't know the date. But, um, but, but the question is, uh, yes. that was, okay, is that what you, the information you're trying to tell me without giving me the hearsay? Yes. Okay, you can continue. I didn't know the date in which I would need them delivered. And so I needed to tell them what date that was. Okay. And instructions were to pay the day before. So I didn't pay until the day before. But you had to pay the company for the that cost you're of buying. the shingles themselves, just okay. the shingles. All the other materials, the plywood, the nails, the drip edge, the moisture, some of the moisture barrier that I had purchased, um, some roof venting, all of these things. In the very beginning, actually, I was given a register receipt list from their register at the party store saying, get this, get this, get this, and get this. And I took that list and I went down the list. I started buying the stuff and marking it off. The shingles were purchased a couple of days, like the day before the actual service was complete, when I knew an actual date they were coming. Um, throughout the process, I had paid him all the way up to $5,500 of the $6,500 prior, $5, prior to him showing up. $5,500 total all the way up until he showed up to the job. So I only owed him a thousand bucks balance. Um, upon the first day of service, I am a service driver. I get on call. And so I have to leave and come back, leave and come back every day. That's what I do. Somebody gets a flat tire, I have to leave and come back. And so I had to leave home while they were there working. His crew was there working. And when I come home, I had noticed the first time I came home within a few hours of them being there, that there was a piece of brand new plywood in the back of one of the the person's personal pickup truck. And I knew it was my plywood because I had just bought it. And so I walked over to the truck and I lifted it up and looked under it like was, there was debris on top of it, like ripped off shingles that they were taking off. It didn't make much sense to me because there was a whole trailer sitting there for them to throw all the debris and there's no reason for debris to go on personal vehicles. So I was like, why do you got this plywood in here? And I grabbed it out. As I was grabbing it out, I seen eight bundles of shingles that were buried underneath all this debris in my brand new sheet of plywood. And so I made mention to it, to, to the defendant, in regards to the fact that some of my bundles of shingles that were just delivered for this project 
were now in the back of one of the contractor's trucks. And why was my shingles in the back of their truck? And I knew how many were delivered, so I counted them. And those that many eight shing bundles of shingles were off the, the pile next to the driveway. So I then got very leery of the whole project and very scared as to what could happen next. So I quit doing work. I quit accepting jobs for three days and stayed home. I even made like breakfast for everybody and, you know, supplied like all kinds of hospitality, um, opened my home to them. Um, they started doing, ripping everything off, doing everything, getting everything going. And when they were ripping all the shingles off, all the, well, not all the debris, but a lot of the debris was falling into my attic space, which was a very clean and usable space prior to this job. Um, and so when they were ripping everything off, they put the new plywood on, they were going through and trying to skip some of the pieces of plywood and not tear everything off. And some of the pieces of plywood, the, the guy was trying to, the man's name was actually Diego. <clears throat> he kept saying, it's good, it's good, it's good. And I said, no, I got all new, all new. I kept trying to tell him all new. And basically I had to sit there and babysit the whole time and watch everything that was being done. Well, after a couple of days and everything was said to be done, I noticed that my back entryway still hadn't been shingled. And I mentioned it to Diego and he said to talk to the boss. And then I also went up into the attic because I wanted to start to do my insulation of the roof. And when I pulled down the retractable stairs in my upstairs hallway, I got a dump, half a dump truck full of debris dumped on me and in my face of all the rip offs and some of the tear off stuff that fell into the attic because when they tore everything off, it was falling down into there. I made mention to Simon, I said, uh, can you please come? Because he was telling me the job was complete. I was like, well, that back entryway ain't done. The eaves troughs weren't put back up. And I still have this big mess in my attic. Can you please come clean this up and finish this up? And he demanded by text message that I pay him the thousand dollars for the balance that he was owed before he come and finish cleaning anything up, before he come and mentioned anything about the back entryway or the eaves troughs or anything. He his text message to me every day was can I get my money? When can I get my money? Call and call and call and text and text and text. And I didn't even have a receipt or an invoice at this point. So I started telling him once I get a bill or an invoice or something that proves to anybody in the world that I hired you, because we had no written contract, that until I get that invoice, there's nothing I'm going to do for any kind of a payment. So I'm going to need this invoice. And so within a few days of him finishing his job or a week or whatever, he sends me this invoice, this past due invoice. Merkel circled with red ink and past due on it and and adds four hundred dollars to the bill for dump fees taken to granger we had already agreed on a total price of sixty five hundred he's trying to add four hundred dollars for his trailer not including the fact that i went up in the attic and did all the work myself i had like eight to, probably eight to ten thirty or forty gallon contractor bags full of debris that i hauled out of my own attic by myself and he's trying to increase that. So I didn't agree with that. Did he include a receipt from Granger? No, no. Um, so when I went up in the attic to do the insulation and I got bombarded with all this debris and I get up in the attic, I start looking around and there's nails like Hellraiser everywhere. And wait, there's nails where? Coming through between the trusses in the attic. The trusses are where the, the the framing nails are supposed to secure the plywood to the outside of the home through and into the trusses. Well, every which way you look, there's nails coming through that look like they were in, intended to hit the trusses, but did not. And so a lot of them you can walk right up to and wiggle and pull right through. And so these are all anchors that were meant at Jackson Foundation, personal knowledge, lack of personal knowledge, lack of expertise. Potentially here today. So there's some objections of how did you, essentially one of them is a lack of personal knowledge. The other one is you're trying to give testimony about something that you don't have a personal uh, expertise in. Are you able to address that? How do you how do you know that or what you were about to share? How do you know that that's the case? I know that that's the case because. 
in framing and structures, nails are used for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make an anchor or to connect two pieces of construction material together. Okay, and so. And these are not. You're saying, how do you know that though? You have personal experience with I have, building? I, have, I mean, throughout my life, I have done all kinds of home repairs and you can go online and look at some of the uh, houses I've bought and flipped and sold and done all the work myself on them. Um, 100% of the work. I mean, every bit of it. You've done the work that you're saying? Absolutely, yeah. So you do have some experience? I do have like tons of knowledge and experience of this. My father, when I was a little kid, my father was a contractor. I, I lived every summer on contract sites with my father building homes in Howell, half a million dollar homes in Howell for years. Okay. So I have so a lot of knowledge. So based on that experience, you mean you view this, you believe you can make an assessment that? Absolutely. Of what you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one here. Anybody you can. may. Uh, Mr. Pryor, you were, your deposition was taken uh, prior to today's date, correct? Yes. You were put under oath at that deposition? I was put under oath or I was asked to... You raised your right hand and swore to tell the truth. It's yeah. very clear. Yeah. You recall being placed under oath in that deposition? Yeah. All right, and you testified to in that deposition truthfully, correct? For the most part, yes, I believe I have. I mean, did you lie? About what? I'm the question. You. The question was: Did you testify truthfully? Your response yes. was for the most part. So that means, if I interpret I mean, that, there yes. were some times that you weren't truthful. If, you, if well, that's I mean, your answer. I, so the truth can be depicted in three ways. No, that's I not. Mean, no, that's not the question. The question is: If you testified truthfully. Yes, I did testify truthfully. Yes. Okay, sir. Do you recall being asked the question regarding your experiences uh, in roofing? In roofing, yes. or in general, just knowledge of contract. Specifically in roofing. I'm not a contract roofer. No, I'm not. Okay. My question was, do you recall being asked about that? I don't. Okay. Honestly, it was three hours of. Okay. So if I ask you, I'll bring it to this way. If we need to change it up, I can. I asked you if you're a licensed builder. And I asked you, I said, you're not a licensed builder, correct? And you said, correct. That's true, right? You're not a licensed yeah. builder. And I asked you if you ever worked in the roofing industry. I have not ever worked. And again, that was your testimony. You never worked in the I roofing industry. Work. Okay. Thank you. Sir, did you ever work in the roofing industry? I have never worked in the roofing industry. No, I have not. And isn't it your testimony that, well, how about this? Didn't you testify at your deposition that your knowledge of any issues or defects involving your case stems from someone telling you there's defects or issues with your roof? What solidifies my knowledge? I'm asking, did you testify that way in your deposition? That you were relying on what someone told you to establish the issues you're claiming in your law? You asked me how did I know for a fact that it was valid, that I was making a valid point, and I said I had a contractor come out and give me an estimate. And he Great. said the same thing. Yes. All right. Yeah. So what I asked you in, in your deposition, so I'm clear. Yeah. It, and I... To summarize, I write, I ask you, so it is your position, and this is based on what your roof guy told you, correct? You said correct. So your position was based on what the roof guy told you, correct? Correct. All right, so that's what your testimony is driven from. Therefore, you're not going to say he lacks that <laughs> ability to testify to any issues or claims and defect, or any aspect of the ability to articulate the purpose or the code or the requirements set forth by the Michigan Residential Building Code for this specific issue. He simply lacks that capability to testify to the issue. He's relying, and just for the record, he's relying on hearsay. I think that was his testimony, quite frankly. And he lacks that personal knowledge. A mere skill set or, or a mere experience with others doing their work is not uh, appropriate based to justify the testimony. Okay. And so you just, I guess you must have had a deposition where you say you didn't have any personal experience or knowledge as it relates to, you know. He had asked me if I'd ever worked in that field. No, I have never worked in that field professionally. I've never been contracted, a licensed contractor. No, I have not. 
That was one of this question was specifically about whether I've ever worked professionally in that field. And no, okay. I've been around job sites and I've been in the in the area of jobs because of my my history, my family. So without without invoking the hearsay, meaning whoever it was the, that you came to have give you a quote after the work was done, your review of the work based on your own knowledge rendered what opinion? I'm sorry, I missed that last second. Your review of the uh -huh. workmanship that was done before you brought someone else in to give you a secondary quote gave you what opinion? The opinion of the contractor that came in was that it needed to be completely. No, your, your own personal opinion is what I'm asking about. Before you spoke to another contractor, when you saw the work that was done, what did you think? That it was a complete miss and disaster and why did you think that i have pictures to show you why. because of what you saw yes okay and because of i mean i know the purpose of a nail and the the framing nails are longer than roofing nails roofing nails are short framing nails are long so they anchor solidly into the wood okay how do you know that from prior experience from just a general definition of a nail or an anchor I mean, and, I mean, my personal prior experience with building anything. Okay, so what you're trying to show me is pictures of what you saw when the work was first done? Prior, before, and then after, yes. My house had three You say roofs. prior, before, what do you mean? Yeah, my house had three roofs on it. Okay, before. so so you're going to show me pictures of what your roof looked like before? Before it was touched. Before and then uh, after, Mr. Zaney did any work, then after it was, then after it was work. Okay, yes. you can approach and bring me those well, two pictures. Did you show him those pictures? I would object. Yes. The court issued a scheduling order that required us to turn over exhibits seven days in advance of trial. He didn't do that. Uh, so the reality is I turned over my exhibits and what he's doing and presenting to the court today is outside the court scheduling order. I would object to it. Did you ever turn over your exhibits to the defense? Yes. When? at his deposition i gave him every bit of everything he took everything from my files and copied everything my folder front back inside everything he took every bit of all my notes and everything and that included all of these yes ma'am yes ma'am pictures yes, so you have the pictures your honor I, I reviewed pictures i don't know if those are exactly the pictures i reviewed Show but i would tell the court he did not turn over when he proposed to advise his exhibits okay but if he showed, gave them to you at the deposition then he did turn them off these have been received i think in his complaints here. all right uh, let's find out something anyways. Okay, back on the record. Okay, so these were pictures that were included in the complaint? Yes. Okay. You just want to see the ones we're talking about right now? I want to see the one from before the work was done by Mr. Zaney and then what you say you saw after. Okay. Your Honor, there's a stack of photos he has. He only showed you two pieces. Show him all of the photos that you want to show me. I'm going to show you the two that you have to show him. The first two. She's not going to even get those all she wants. This is the first before, and then this is what I seen when I went in after. Okay, so uh, this is, right. no, you can back up, That's sir, to, to you're right. way too close. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Typically my court officer no, would do this, but I don't have one today. Okay, so this is the, your roof the, before you had any work done? To the right, yeah, to the left is the garage after. Yeah, but this is okay. the inside the this house. This is the roof before any work was inside done. Inside the house, yes. Inside the house. Yes. And this is what? The garage after he did it. Okay, and then what is this? Is that it, is right inside the, the right attic. Way or is yeah, no, that was the right way. That's inside the attic after he was done. Your Honor, can I go out here? These are the same rooms? Yeah, those are the same. Okay. That's the same room, too. You yeah. can. I may? Yeah, you can go out there. You can have, go back to your... To your... May I approach that? Yes. Mr. Pryor, you just handed the court an exhibit indicating this was pictures after the work was done. This one was... In particular, this photo, correct? The top one was the garage after complete, yes. After after shingles were on the roof? No. So no. it wasn't after the job was complete, no, correct? No, after he was done putting the plywood on there. All right. So for clarity's sake, well, that's new plywood. So yeah, he's been he's touched that. Yes. Great. So my question, for clarity's sake, this is not after the job is complete, correct? The top one is after the plywood's been installed in the garage. Correct. No, no intent to trick anybody. Your Honor, I'm pointing to the top portion of that photo. That was during the course in which the job was occurring, correct? In the garage, yeah. In the garage. Yeah. So let's be clear. In the garage, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. During the course of the work being performed, correct? 
the top one, yes. Great. And that's all, hey, we'll fold it. How about that? No trickery here. Yeah. Right. Your Honor, if I may just do the well. Is that okay, Your Honor? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. So I have it folded for the record. I have your piece of exhibit it has a page 11 written next to it. It's what you purport to be a picture of the garage, mm -hmm. right? Yes, that is. We have to say words yes. for the record okay. so they can pick it up. Yeah. Okay. No, that's just what he's doing I, is normal. He wouldn't he would instruct anybody that way. He's not being smart. Yep. Again, the garage during the course of the work, not at completion. Right? Yes, after the plywood was applied. Yes. Great. So after the plywood uh, would, would be done, they would do uh, whatever they do for shingles. All right. All right. So this is just midway through. Yeah, I'm not even worried about that picture, though. That's right. not one I'm concerned about. Okay, so this picture you're not concerned about at this point right the second no i'm not right. we were talking about the, the before and after of the attic of the house sir she asked me what that was and i explained it to her it was the garage when it was done with plywood well, your honor they're not object to the admission or i'm not sure if he's moved for admission but that proposed uh, document he's not worried about it he doesn't think it's, it's not that i'm not worried I'm, we're not, not talking so, about that right now so you're trying to you're trying to admit this not this correct I mean, it's all been submitted and he has all of them as evidence that is part of an issue. Yes, that is an issue, separate issue besides the nails that we were talking about. How I knew that there was an issue with the anchor points walking into the attic of the home was from the other picture on the other side. Okay, so, so I was, he's objecting you because you said that it's not, you say you're not worried about it, which essentially- I mean, I'm very worried about it, but not at this point, right this second, because you only asked me for the two pictures. Correct, but you gave me three pictures. Right, so if you want me to admit this as an exhibit, you're going to have to be worried about it, and you're going to have to get through the evidentiary issues. Okay. I told you from the beginning yes. that there's a lot of rules that comes to litigation. And I recognize you're at a disadvantage because he's a very experienced litigator. But that doesn't mean that those rules go by the wayside because you don't have that experience. So you have to answer the questions so that we can decide and flush out whether or not uh, this is something he needs to object to. I don't necessarily think Mr. Zaney is objecting to this one. Is that correct? I think it's this one he's trying to flush out because you put them on the same paper. If you had to put them separately, then we probably wouldn't be going through this. So I can do one of two things. I can cut this in half if you like, and then we can just focus on this right now. And if this becomes an issue, we can bring it up. That works. Yes. Okay. Can I have some scissors, please? So, Mr. Pry, let me give you this one back, and then if you want to address when you get ready to address this issue, then you can move to, or present that. So, right now we're talking about. This is the before. I don't know if I got this one. Right. Okay, this is the before yes, of the attic. attic. Same same place. This is the after, yes. correct? Okay. Um, continue your testimony as to, and so you're saying these that when you saw this, this struck you as some there's something wrong because you think it should look like this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you're moving to admit these as plaintiff's exhibit, um, I'll say one and two, correct? Sure. Are you objecting? Oh, yeah. Okay, so these will be admitted as one and two. And I had mentioned when I walked up in there, there was a bunch of debris that fell down on top of me. I was gonna give you those pictures too. Okay. Those are the extra ones that he this asked was about. Those so you showed him the, the pictures yeah, of the he's, debris. He's seen them, yes. And this was debris that um you said hit you after the work was done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's correct because they have a bunch of handwriting all over the, the pictures. They're not, those are, they're not appropriate exhibits to be submitted to the course of the trial. What it, it's, it's it's just my notes, just explaining what it is. Okay, each one of them just explains what I see. Uh, that I'm not going to grant that objection just based on his notes. Um, these, this is uh, other than the, the notes, you have an issue with that. The court can disregard his notes. I've asked him to lay appropriate foundation. Okay, uh, what is what is this, sir? That's the debris that was in the attic after I went up there that I had to clean up that wasn't cleaned up. So 
So what you're saying is after the um, Mr. Zaney completed the roofing project, this was the condition of the attic. Correct. Okay. And so how long after the project was done did you take this picture? A uh, few days. And so you're saying, I, I see in the picture, looks like, is it Christmas wrapping paper and something gold? That there was, was a, a gold basket and some wrapping paper over in a corner. But I just threw it out there in the middle okay. just to throw it out with the stuff when I cleaned it up. But your, your testimony is that prior to this roofing project, none of this stuff was... None of the roofing debris was up there. there I mean, there was some miscellaneous stuff from when I bought the house from the last owner. Okay. A couple few things, but nothing... Major, if you look at the original okay. picture. Your objection is uh, as to this exhibit is overruled. We'll admit this as plaintiff's exhibit three. And then what what is this? That's the stairs that I had to pull. The one to the right is the stairs that I had to pull down to get up into the attic. And when that's when the stuff was falling. I was okay. just showing that it came down when I pulled the stairs down. That other one is a, is a copy of the other picture that you just cut out. Okay, so Sorry. we can remove that now, correct? Yes, and then, what is this? Again, just when I pulled the stairs down, all the stuff that came tumbling down in my face. Okay, so it's just another angle of this yes yes or and everything that came out and then this just appears to be another angle of it looks like a combination of yes. your exhibit three and exhibit just two sections yeah you know, throughout the roof that were also nails everywhere and broken boards and debris up into the insulation barrier. Okay, I'm going to include this with your exhibit three because it's just another angle of it, it appears. And then be admitted as part of your exhibit three as well, which is to show the debris. Continue, Mr. Pryor. Um, so when all this transpired and all this stuff was coming down, and I was trying to get it cleaned up. I was begging him to come back and do it. Um, never happened. It just never simply happened. So um, I ended up cleaning it up myself and not insulating the attic. So the insulation is still all sitting there. I had started to insulate part of it. My uncle went up there and started to, but he kept getting, every time he was trying to put the insulation between the rafters, he was getting cut with the nails on his arms and hands and stuff. And so he basically said, no, let's, we got to figure out what's going on with all these Objection nails. Objection here, sir. That is it. Um, he refused to do it, basically. And so I didn't insulate the attic yet, even. And so the last couple of years, I've just been paying the additional expenses of the heating and cooling. Um, it never got resolved. And I, I assumed that it was going to be eventually. And after a couple of weeks of dealing with this, with the defendant, I had stopped over at the party store that is owned by the defendant. and. Objection, Your Honor. Lacks personal knowledge. To see the owner. How do you know that he owns the party store? They personally both told me they own the party store. The, all three of them do. Him, their brothers. Who personally told you this? Simon. Simon told you he owned it. Story. No, did, I didn't ask you was this story. I said, did he tell you that he owned yes. it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Nonetheless, it's not even really relevant to take on the store anyway. So, right? We don't care who owns the store. You stop by to the store. I stop by to the store for my fiance to run in and play some lottery or do whatever, get their drinks or whatever they're going to do. And I stayed in the car because I knew the situation between us and I didn't want to be disrespectful. So I stayed in the car. Well, when being in the car for less than three or four minutes, uh, the defendant walked out, opened the passenger side Objection, of my- Objection, Your Honor, it's relevant. It doesn't go to the purpose of the nature and scope of the complaint. The, 
You saying the defendant opened your door? Opened my vehicle door. About this issue? Yes. And was well, wait, I, I gotta address I gotta address the the objection. How is that not relevant? Because it doesn't go to the the, the contract, the breach of contract, or damages relating to the breach of contract. And that's nature and scope limited. If you recall on this record, we filed because this whole oratory existed before. We filed a motion to uh, as it relates to the complaint. And the court addressed that on the record respectfully. You narrow it down to simply because I need clarification. What am I defending against? Right. This is a breach of contract claim, and that's what we're here presenting today. And in this attempt to by this plaintiff to misalign reality and facts as it relates to other instances uh, is is not relevant to anything as it relates to the nature and scope of the complaint. Contract breach damages. Right. pertaining to this so right. this is way outside the scope right i don't know what the door opening I, I i do remember addressing something but it was so long ago i can't remember exactly what how the door or this interaction has anything to do with the case if right. anything he parlayed that into a claim of assault oh, okay Both yeah i don't i said we don't we're not dealing with assault in general civil Correct. so if that's what you want to share no that's a criminal matter that you have to share no, no, no. i just was making mention of the what happened what caused me to come in here to try to do something about this because well that is that, well this is what cost you I right. well, so yeah. all the other yeah you the can, final you, straw to not God. allow any rectification in my home because okay there was mentioned I mean you want to talk about trying to realign facts and to redirect uh the whole case into uh, again these yeah but do you That's, have any more evidence that supports um your breach of contract though like receipts any more photos that you wanted um it looks like you might have some text messages there i don't know what those are but this is uh whatever evidence that you are purporting to uh present to the court to support this claim of breach of contract make sure you show mr zaney uh, mr edward zaney and then um you can proceed to try to present i don't know i hope all of that's not evidence no 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 um, no 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 i'm just the only thing that i have is the estimate from the other contractor um oh, got it. Right. um and then my payments to simon and all my receipts from everything that i paid for oh yeah here's the other contractor um oh, I thought you said there was some bills for that you received for dump fees or no, no, a, on his invoice. He an invoice I, that should be yeah, yeah, I got how many that. the invoice. Yeah, I got it. Um I'm gonna object on the invoice. We can take it piece by piece. Oh yeah, we gotta do it. You're object to the invoice. Which I'm asking for the invoice that he said Mr. Zaney gave him. Joe, you have to show him. I'm is not it? gonna. I'm not gonna object to that. No, uh, okay. my objection is going to be to the third party, the other uh, document. The contractor. You need the contractor here if you want to present his statements. Yeah, well, of course, assuming he's a contractor. Well, yeah, I'm just taking his word for it. Yes, sir. So I don't know who he is. I don't mean to be disrespectful. Yeah, I don't know who he is, but. If you got an estimate, you can't just present. So there's a rule called hearsay. It's it's an overwhelming rule. It's overwhelming for attorneys. It's overwhelming from judges. So you can't present an out of court statement um, to prove something. So that would be an out of court statement. That estimate. If you want that to come in, you need the person who made that estimate <laughs> to be right here under oath in order to get it in here. As it relates to the estimate, um, this is a past due. Okay, this is a, a total invoice that you're submitting here. It says to Anthony Pryor, shows the total amount. Dump fees taken to Granger, past due. And you're not objecting. So this will be. Plaintiff's exhibit, where are we at four? Yes, I believe we're at four, yeah. I think you yep. doing one. I did. Okay. And so
What other evidence other than the estimate that you wanted to I present? have my payments to the defendant. I don't know that they are. I don't think they're disputing that you've made payments of a certain amount. Okay. You say you paid 5,500. Right, right, that's on here. So they're not disputing that. So you don't need to show me that. Okay. And then my receipts for, for the materials. Um, I don't think they're disputing that you pay for the materials either. So anything else that you uh, want to show for your breach of contract? Um, no, just that he never finished the contract. He never finished the job. Okay, so you're saying he never came back to remove the, or to complete the back entryway um he never removed the debris the eve troughs never were put back up right. and then you believe that the worksmanship uh fell below the standard absolutely okay oh and i want to say one more thing um to about the craftsmanship and meeting the standards um i want to make one reference point on the weight of these construction materials whether they had any anchors or not is extremely heavy jackson your honor I'm just as far as any basis to use this testimony, he's not laying the appropriate foundation for the testimony which he reports us in the report. I think his experience is extremely limited in many aspects of roofing. Uh, if there's any, my experience is limited in roofing. So even when giving testimony, you got to explain what you're talking about because when you just start talking about anchors, it's like white noise for me. I don't have no clue what you're talking about. So the lack of foundation, I'm going to grant that uh, objection. Um, if you can explain what you're talking about in more detail, okay. or what you're purporting to provide to the court. I'm sure he's going to address it in his portion of his defense. And uh, there was a there was a man that was hired to come into my home and create a video. And uh, that video, I was, I actually requested for- Hired request, by whom? Um, hired by the defendants. Oh, so- To come in and do a video. Prior to the work or after the work? After the work, before this case, as a part of the defense. Oh. And there was a mention in there, there's two mentions in there, and I just want to make mention of those uh, and, and put my part out there right now, because- Mentions in what? In the statement from the person that came and did the video of my roof inside my home. Not relevant, Your Honor. It's not, it's not in the evidence. Yeah, oh. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh. So if they well, present, I... so so you get your chance to present your case now. If they bring that into evidence, you get a chance to rebut okay. later. Okay. So that's not in evidence now. I have no clue what you're okay. talking about. I'll to be honest. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to provide before he he gets to question you? Just want to make mention of the the escapades in the charades in the disastrous amount of time wasted from the defense on a whole bunch of stuff that would never be done from any other attorney in a case like this. Oh, we're, we're talking about the attorney or the <laughs> talking about the contract, the defense case. Period. We'll see okay. as we objection go. sustained. Go. Thank you. Um, and yeah, you can cross examine. Your Honor, would you entertain a motion for direct verdict this time before I proceed with the. Uh... Yeah, I think there's a question with that. You can continue. Provided the court a notice uh, indicating uh, a balance due. And that was entering the exhibit. Do you recall that? Your exhibit four? Yes. Okay, you would agree that that out properly identifies the nature and scope of the contract? Between no. you and Simon Zaney? No. That was the, exactly the document you received prior to work beginning, correct? No. You received an estimate prior to the work beginning? No. You never received any? No. Are you sure? Positive. Didn't you testify your de deposition that you had, in fact, uh, received and reviewed that prior to the start of the work? No, he physically told me how much he was going to charge me. That was the scope of our contract. Would you agree that the scope of your contract included that you provide for materials? Yes, he asked me to buy my own materials. Forget asking. You agreed you would provide materials, yeah. correct? Yes. And he would provide labor only, correct? Yes. So to the extent he had to do any labor, he would do that, and you would provide everything else. Agreed? Yes. Was there any indication in this, uh, at least as it pertains to your exhibit, or that he would, or his people would install any ease straws? 
may remove them. I'm asking you, was there any nature or discussion in this document, Exhibit 4, that relates to that? Exhibit 4 doesn't relate to anything in regards to that because it wasn't before the, the contract was done. We discussed everything that was going to be done at the time when we made the agreement for the price. You would agree you never discussed actual e -tru these trucks, correct? We did. We did actually. Where did you say that in any of your complaints? Where did I say that? I mean, yeah, it's like one of the least. So you don't care about it? It's not. No, it's All not right. that I don't care about it. It just wasn't what my main concern was. It's just part of the issue is that there's one more thing that he didn't do. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, a dumpster, did you provide a dumpster? No, Simon brought his trailer. Well, you you would agree that'd be something under the scope of your agreement because he was just doing labor that you would provide a dumpster. No, he said that he would bring his trailer and get rid of everything within the price of sixty five hundred. What documentation do you have to prove that? A verbal agreement. Do you have anything in writing to establish that? I mean, your contract right there in front of you says that I would pay him sixty five hundred labor for him to do the whole job. Okay, if so you would agree that this is the contract. I mean, that was the, that's my proof that we had any kind of a contract. Would yes. you agree this is the contract between you and Simon Zane? No. Is this the same thing that you're talking about? Correct, yes. Your Honor, it's his exhibit. During the course of your pleadings, did you supply this document to the court? Yes. Did you cross out the past due or the word past, like edit it and white it out in your pleadings? No. Uh, as a result of receiving this document, uh, did you threaten Mr. Zaney? <laughs> as a result of collection activities, did you ever threaten Simon Zaney? There's been no collection activities whatsoever. Okay. You'd agree you did, in fact, receive a copy of an invoice indicating past due amount. With the, the, that was the, I begged for it. You I would agree, you, you would agree, that that's not yes. my question. Sir. Yes. Focus yes. on the question. It's going to yeah. go a lot smoother. Yeah. You would agree you received a copy of your exhibit four from Simon Zaney. Yes. You would agree the right. copy in which you received indicated it said past due amount. I, which I had a problem with. Okay. Yes. I'm asking, did you receive it? Yes, I did. Absolutely. All right. Is that uh, the amount that you would agree that Simon Zaney invoiced you with 1397.60? That is the amount he invoiced me. During the course of your action, uh, in response to uh, Simon Zaney's counter complaint, had you uh, provided a counter affidavit? In regards to his counter complaint, have I provided a counter affidavit? Correct. For what? I'm asking if you ever provided one, sir. Don't know the purpose. It, so you'd say to say you never. So yes, yes or no then. No, I don't. Know. You would agree and buy the materials in this case until at least how about this? I'll reward that. So it's a fair question. You were invoiced from ABC Supply Company on or about November 4th, 2022 for the items you purchased that. from ABC, correct? Objection. We've already addressed that. That's not an objection. Did he asked you that and you answered? We've already answered that earlier. I, I no, he didn't that. question you about it. So you, you have to answer the question. Now, if he asks you about, about it the second time, then you can object okay. and say, ask and answer. Yes, I purchased some of the materials on November 4th from ABC. And namely, you purchased from ABC uh, landmark colonial slate shingles, correct? Correct. And then uh, CT Shadow H&R COL slate. Yeah, it's the same shingle. It's just a cap for the ridge. Great. Those are the items you purchased for your roof on November 4th, 2022. Right. And on that date and time, they were performing the services on November 4th, 2022? Uh, it was that day or the next day, or one or the other. Or the day before, November 3rd. No, because they, no. You sure they didn't begin services on November 3rd, 2024? No, the day that he started Excuse was the me, day. 22. November 3rd, 2000. 22 had they been performing services on this roof. He might have started the tear off on the third, but I don't exactly remember. But I know on the fourth was the date that I, he was there to do to start it and he needed the shingles. So I went straight over there and did it immediately. Does this roof leak? At this point, not that I know of. All right. Does this roof uh, any loose shingles that you observe? A couple have actually a couple pieces. Um, I don't know if they were just shoved in somewhere or like extra cut off debris or whatever. Over the course of the last year and a half, I've had a couple shingles in my driveway, but nothing that was any full pieces that you can see where it came from. 
Any nails protruding through the shingles? At this point, they are not backing out yet. And I know I asked you this, the roof does not leak, correct? Not that I know of at this point. There's no OSB or the plywood coming off of the roof, correct? Coming off of the roof? Correct. Not at this point that I know of. And two items, sir. Do you recognize those pictures? What do you recognize those pictures to be? 921 West Lenaway. You do, and that's your residence, correct? It is. And do those pictures, excuse me, accurately reflect the condition of the roof today? Um, I mean, aesthetically, you can see the roof. Okay. So that's an accurate reflection of the condition it's, of the roof today. The aesthetics look great. I'm asking. No, no that's question. not the. You have to answer yes. the question. Is yes. that is that, yes. is that how the roof looks today? Yes. You want your honor defense A. A. Thank you. We provide the court move for admission of defense exhibit A and B. Any objection yes. to defense A? Can I approach. Yes. Defense A is admitted. A and B, your honor. A and B. I did bifurcate them. Okay, sounds you, good. You, if you like to change it, I have no problem. No, that's fine. Just different angles of the roof, correct. I asked you whether or not there's any nails protruding through the shingles. Yes, you did. And there's no none, correct? Ready answer. Answer it again, please. Not that I know of at this point. But you said the roof was completed when? Yeah. November of 22. Okay. And they started in November 22. Yes. But the contract or the agreement was in the beginning of 2020? 22 in May. I think the court was looking at a typo in the top right corner. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to look at the invoice and why it says November it was 20. a typo, yeah. Oh, okay. So, got it. So, makes sense. You can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. So, as you sit here today and you present this case to the court, your concern is uh, that nails are sticking out the bottom of your roof, correct? No. Your concern is that those nails that are in that you provide the court pictures of are going to somehow protrude through your shingle? No. So what is the issue with your case today? What do you feel specifically as it pertains, pertains to this nailing issue you present? Okay. And I ask you to limit your question based on your personal knowledge. It is my personal knowledge and experience and understanding as an adult, as any other human whoa, whoa, whoa. everybody's maybe. gonna calm down because i have no i'm an no, adult i, I know but i don't saying. know anything about roofs okay so you can if, do your personal knowledge if you if you take a nail and you <coughs> use it as an anchor to hold two pieces of wood together that it should go into both pieces the one the nail that goes through the plywood should enter into the trusses that's when they're framing a home. Objection, foundation, lacks knowledge. Okay. Um, these are the nails, correct? Yep. What are you saying? What are the trusses? What is that? The trusses are the cross. See in the other picture to your right? Yeah. Yeah, those long boards that go straight up and down the picture. These ones? Those are trusses. Yep. Those are what hold the frame of your home. The so you're objection. saying that, so what your personal knowledge or belief is that the nails are supposed to go through that? You're supposed to, yes, they anchor the plywood on the outside to the to those, yes. Okay. Yes. I object to that on foundation is responsible. The found, well, he was answer, he's answering your question. He said he believes, you said based on his personal knowledge, he believes that Sir. as an adult. Fair enough. Sir, what year was your house built? It was built in 1908. And you would agree um, that there's three layers of shingles on this roof? 
I would agree that I was told by your brother that there my was clients are my client today. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. your client that there was three layers of shingles on my roof before he started the job. You have no reason to dispute that. Okay. All right. You would agree that in those pictures that you provided the court, there's these things you call trusses. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. On top of the trusses are these things, uh, these one by six planks of wood. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. And on top of that is this sheathing. Or do you know what sheathing is? That's plywood. Mm -hmm. All right. So you want to call sheathing. it plywood. Yeah. Would you call OSB decking, whatever you want to call it. So then you have uh, maybe a waterproofing layer. A moisture barrier. Sure. Yeah. And then shingles, correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so all that weight. Great. My question, just so the judge can understand the chronology of what gets applied to the roof, on top of that, uh, those things that you call trusses, this one by six, these pieces, planks of wood, those stayed intact. Those are from the original house, correct? Yeah. You All know right. what those are for? On top of that was OSB, correct? Right. These nails in which you're showing the court go through the one by six, correct? One by six, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Now, one. that's my question. You can address it with the judge when you uh, when she gives you the opportunity. <clears throat> You're aware, sir, that the city that the Simon Zaney pulled a permit with the city of Lansing to do this roof, correct? Yes. And no reason to dispute that. No. No. And you agree that the city of Lansing inspected and found about that permit, correct? Correct. All right. You agree that Simon Zaney is a licensed contractor. I have to, I guess, understand that he is. Um, you, according to the document you showed me, no reason to dispute that he's a licensed contractor, correct? Correct. All right. What's the status of your ownership on this residence? I'm in the middle of purchasing it. Second way out, it's most. Do you the do you have any ownership interest in this place? Absolutely. as it stands now, short of the placement of the nails, as, as I understand your testimony to be, there's no other problems with the functionality of this roof, correct? The problem that I have with the functionality of this roof is the OSB is improperly anchored to the framing of my home. And through that one by six- Just object on the grounds he lacks the foundation and knowledge to Testify to that in this court. Half the time when those nails hit that one by six. Well, by there's six an split. objection, so it means I have to address it. You can't just talk over the objection. Saying you don't have the foundational knowledge to address that. So you're you're trying to give some expert testimony when you've already indicated that you're you don't have the knowledge to do that. And that's why you had to get another person to come and do the secondary quote. But you didn't bring that person to court. So that's what the objection is. So I have to sustain it because you've already established that you don't have the requisite knowledge to give this expert opinion about whether or not this was done properly or not. You can continue with your question. Thank you, Your Honor. Isn't it true, sir, you were convicted of a crime of theft and dishonesty in the 54 District Court within the past? What's the relevance? It's allowed under 608, Ron. Why is it relevant? Because it goes to veracity of the witness. It goes to, and that's exactly what it's used for. And the question was asked a certain way for uh, a certain reason. And I'm sorry, I should be standing. Uh, I believe the court rule allows for crime, theft, and dishonesty of the testifying person to be inquired upon uh, as long as and so as it is dealing with the crime, of theft, or dishonesty and it's within the past 10 years. If the court doesn't want to address that, I can try. I'm not interested in listed criminal history. Thank you. When you filed this complaint, what did you pay for a filing fee? It's $160. All right. And at the time in which you paid that, you had requested uh, only damages in the amount of $6,500. Uh, what was the amount of damages in which you requested when you initially filed your complaint? Twelve thousand. Right. Did you ever pay an additional filing fee for any uh, 
amendments to your complaint or anything like that? Multiple things. For a couple of motions and two different And I don't think I have any additional questions at this time. We'll reserve the right to call this witness for our case in chief on the counter complaint. Do you have any other witnesses you're calling today, sir? Okay. Uh, so your your case is resting. You can proceed. Yeah, I'd like to motion the court formally on the record for a uh, motion for direct verdict from this disposition, essentially. Uh, if I could have that opportunity. You can proceed. Thank you. I'm going to provide a copy to the uh, plaintiff. If I may approach. Yes. I have a uh, bench memorandum, our defense trial. Uh, bench memorandum. Inevitably, uh, the plaintiff's case in chief is for a claim in the scope and nature of a breach of contract. The nature and scope of the breach of contract, the plaintiff has the obligation to prove one, an actual contract exists, the terms of that contract, a nature and scope of the breach, a breach of the contract, and essentially damages. And our position is that, I think it's rather clear, these parties had a contract, the contract was for labor only, uh, and which was expressed by the plaintiff. He was responsible for the balance of an in all materials. The nature and scope of the contract was to install a roof. The court has received documentation showing that the roof was installed, and there's been no dispute that the roof was installed. The dispute comes down to a layperson's optical opinion as to the placement of nails without any supporting proof directly relating to the claim and scope of breach. There has been nothing established on this record relating to the nature and scope of an actual breach. More so palpable on the record and more so identifiable is extremely the, the extreme lack of information or extreme scope of information relating to any claim of damages. There's been absolutely zero testimony as it relates to the nature and scope of damages. There's been, there is a rather thorough uh, analysis of what the obligation is and who has the burden of proof to establish it uh, and nature and scope of any mitigation efforts. There is none. There's no testimony from this individual of his attempt to mitigate. In fact, quite the contrary. Anything he asserted. Uh, as it relates to uh, this case, uh, for instance, that photo that was retracted as an exhibit it was during the scope and course of the the, the installation. There's nothing showing that that was afterwards. His testimony submitted to the court. Excuse me. Instance, I'm getting a chance to respond to what he said. Thank you. Uh, he failed to mitigate his damages. Inevitably, there's no proofs on the record that he submitted that he did any effort uh, to mitigate the damages. And quite the quite the legal obligation that he does so. Uh, the nature and scope of any damages here uh, have to correlate to uh, damages stemming from an actual breach. You don't have the breach on the record. You have a complaint as to craftsmanship as, as far as optics. Again, there's case law that relates directly to this within our brief. Uh, the, any defects or omissions, minor in nature, the extent the builder is considered as substantially performed on the contract, only re the entitled to only recover contract price minus damages for the cost of correction. There's been no testimony as far as correction, but what needs to be corrected? And there's another case a little bit more on point that deals with the nature and scope of the appearance. And in one second, I'll have it articulated for the record, Your Honor. You gave him a copy? I did, I provided a copy. So you're gonna, we're gonna have to give him an opportunity to read this. He's not an attorney. No, that's fine. Do you want me to do that now, Your Honor? And, and it would probably be best to let him so he can follow along versus drowning and not understanding or following your arguments. And, and for the record, Your Honor, majority of these were asserted in our affirmative defenses when we filed our response and had the opportunity to take those into account, uh, both, I think, prior to today and at the time in which we pled them originally. We'll give them a moment to read it. Yes, When you finish arguing, you'll be you'll have an opportunity to counter what he's saying. Okay. Did you finish reading already? Um oh, well, I'm I just am getting, finishing right, now. Yeah. And I'm not even I'm just skimming through the last couple pages because well, you don't want to skim through. This is a this do you know what this motion is that he's giving giving you? 
Yes, it, he is trying to have basically make case in point against me for other references to other cases and the outcomes in those cases that pertain to certain things that have to do with my case, like trying yeah. to make comparisons. Well, that's what that's what we do in, in court. Yeah. So he's filed a motion yeah. or he's filing a motion here because you've completed your case. So after a plaintiff complete their case, if the other party doesn't believe that they met their burden, they can make a motion to the court to kick the case because you haven't met your minimum burden. That's what he's doing now. Okay. And he's giving you the legal uh, basis that he believes it's appropriate for the court to kick it. That's what those other cases are for. That's how we operate yeah. in court. We use court rules. We use case law. And we use statutes. So he's relying on these cases mm -hmm. as the basis as to why he believes you failed to do your due diligence in meeting the minimum burden. And because of that, the court should grant this motion that he's making now uh, to dismiss your claim before requiring them to present a defense. So that's why I'm giving you an opportunity to read it. But if you're not interested you know, in reading I, it, I, I have read half of it. You just want to skim I mean, it. It's, yeah, it's I'm, uh, no, I mean, I'm giving you the time to do that now because I recognize you're not an attorney and I don't want you to be bombarded or overwhelmed. But if you're not going to take that time no, meaningfully, the, the, I can guarantee you I have um, millions of things I could be doing today because I've got all these things I need to review inside. So if you don't want to take the time, we don't have to, but it's up to you. Damn, it's not that I don't want to take the time. Okay, well, then I want to see you reading it and not just throwing it off. Thank you. Good morning, Chico, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, as indicated here, the contract must be established. The breach must be uh, established, and the burden of proof all falls with the person pursuing the claim. This is, again, a breach of contract claim. Uh, the damages, as indicated, are limited. There's been no proof on this record, I think, as to the relation, relation to the nature and scope of the breach or anything uh, as it pertains to a breach, specifically failure to perform or uh, performance uh, doesn't comply with the contract requirements. Essentially, they're uh, trying to pursue an implied warranty for the nature and scope in which the construction occurred. Uh, however, I don't think they were properly identified. And if it were identified, it has to be clear that this individual is only limited to not optimum perfection, but conforming to the specifications. There's been no, again, no testimony that the specs in which this roof was installed don't conform to the Michigan residential code. In fact, the contrary is true. Licensed contractor pulled a permit, city inspected and approved the permit. Uh, in addition, and that's Oakwood Villa Apartments, Inc. v. Gula, 9 Mishap, 568, 1968. The breach of contract need not be precisely established. However, uncertainty as to the fact or amount of damages caused by the breach is fatal. Home Insurance Co. versus Commercial and Industrial Service Security Services, Inc., 57 Mishap 143, 1974. Damages cannot be conjectural, speculative in nature, or dependent upon the chance of business or other contingencies. Essentially, the pleadings in this case leverage that the concern was for the placement of these nails and that the concern uh, of this individual, and I think on the record today, that these nails could somehow cause damage in the future it's all conjectural again the breach in nature and scope of the breach conjectural it's not essentially affirmative on the record as it relates to that obligation in addition your honor they're not there the plaintiff is not uh as a proper measure of damages afforded for, uh anything more than uh again the optimum optimum perfection is not the standard they have to establish a proven defect a proven defect, the builder is only liable in making wood or the work as good as specified in the contract or compensating the owner for the cost to do so, both of which we don't have. You have pictures before this court, I think, from the condition of the roof, coupled with testimony as to the uh, functionality of the roof. Your Honor, the roof was installed properly. There's no uh, information. Even looking at the facts in light most favorable to the non-moving party here, be it the plaintiff, he's failed to meet his burden on at least two or count uh, elements two and three breach and damages therefore the courts i think required to enter uh a, a directed verdict in favor of the defendant in this aspect of the case You can respond to the motion. Um, Your Honor, 
it's my position that as a homeowner and somebody that works very hard for everything that they've gotten that I don't want to take anybody for nothing. I don't want to be taken from anybody for nothing. You know, no I just stop taxing elements or taxing uh, into evidence in order to appropriate portion. <laughs> I just wanted to least give it to Mark unit, so I'm gonna give him a leeway. I just wanted my roof done properly and to the standards in which anybody else would expect. Um I don't think that I have done I know for a fact that I've proven that my case that this is not accurately done 100 properly um how, do, and, how have you proven your case though because you're not able to give expert testimony because you're not a licensed contractor correct. you well, have tried to present as evidence a um quote from someone who is licensed i'm assuming is the person licensed i believe so no no, 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 no you I, believe so i don't have a copy of their license but they have how, so you wouldn't got a quote from somebody you don't know their qualifications. I, I called somebody who had an advertisement on Facebook on a friend's page, and that right there doesn't help you either. Because um, if you're going to make a claim that their work fell below the standard of, of craftsmanship, you're going to need someone who's licensed and has a substantial a uh, professional basis to look at this work and say this is why this is done wrong and you're not able to produce that is what i'm saying you're saying just based on your own knowledge which is not sufficient because you told me this is not your field you told them at a deposition this is not what you do for a living if it was i'm inclined to believe you probably would have done it versus paying someone else to do it uh, outside of that even if you did uh, you would be able to produce or provide the court with some testimony like no i do have experience doing this which you've not been able to establish. You've also um, been shown these exhibits, which is what the roof looks like now. Um, and you answered questions about the conditions of this roof now, which is that there's no leaks. Uh, there's been no plywood coming off that uh, you've not noticed or identified any shingles falling that you can identify where they came from. I'm looking at the pictures. I don't that this is supposed to be or purport to be what the roof looks like now i don't see any missing shingles and so uh your your breach of contract claim i'm a, i was assuming was because of the uh placement of these nails you believe that they're not placed properly uh, and then them not coming back to remove the debris is what i'm assuming your breach of contract was the debris issue I don't think you need an expert for, but this, whether or not these were properly placed or that the placement here um, essentially breaches the contract, and doesn't give you the quality that you're looking for, you're not able to give your own testimony about, you need to have someone who does roofing give that testimony. Can we recess until I have somebody come in? When do you anticipate having someone come in? I'll call them right now and ask them. They'll come in today? Maybe. Council. I think I think offense that I had a family member pass away overseas, and but for this trial, I could not attend that funeral. He said he's going to have him come today, though. He can't have him come today. The guy's not a licensed contractor, and when I spoke with him, said he's not showing up. He refuses to. Oh, so you up. spoke to the person? I did spoke to this person in advance in preparation uh, when I was identified. Is that the person you're trying to call? I don't know who he's talking about that said they wouldn't show up. I don't know. Where. Well, no, the not that he wouldn't show up. The the person that he's saying that he spoke to is the person you're trying to call. I don't know. What's it's, the person's name? It's um Jack. Long. That's who he spoke to, yeah. and he told you that he wasn't a licensed contractor. Is that? I, I mean, I, I don't know. know what that is, but he said he told you otherwise. Yeah. He told you he was licensed. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you can get him in here today, within the next hour, we can take his testimony. Um, otherwise. I have to go into consider his motion because he, you are deficient in presenting your proofs. I, I didn't realize I couldn't present this. I'm sorry. I had no idea. It's not being. I recognize you, that, Your Honor. That's actually not true, though, because I told him at the cold scope of his deposition. I asked him, and I advised you will need to present this witness in person, and he assured us he would be there. So any delay 
He's looking like he, re he doesn't recall. Maybe you can refresh his recollection. I know I told you before from the beginning uh, that you would have to produce your witnesses and you would have to produce your exhibits. And although he's an attorney and you're not, that doesn't mean that the court rules don't apply. Yeah, I didn't know when he would need to be here for how long. Well, it's well, a trial. Which I know. I know he's got it. If you're, wouldn't you think you're going to present evidence if you don't present it at the trial? And we can't this, we can't adjourn it because you didn't verse yourself on the rules. I told you from the beginning, you're going to need to learn the court rules if you want to make this lawsuit. The other op option that you had, uh, which I think this was removed from small claims, is that correct? Correct. Is there a counterclaim that yes. we're pursuing today? It, okay. it, it depends. Okay, frankly. got it. Okay. And so, you, you look like you did attempt to do this in small claims and it was removed from small claims. Um, and so you could have hired an attorney was your other option. Get someone to help you navigate this because the burden is on you. They don't have to defend it. You have to prove it. Okay. While you refresh his recollection, I'm going to uh, go off the record so that I can review this motion and this evidence that's been presented so far. Can I make one case for it? Uh, what's that? In regards to even if a building is built to all to pass every code and inspection on the planet, there's a case in 2005, Michigan versus Ide, state of Michigan versus Ide, where the state of Michigan, Michigan Works building passed every inspection you could possibly imagine was being occupied and collapsed. So it, just because it passes an inspection and somebody come in and say that they believe that it might have been done correctly. That doesn't I, mean, e -Y -D -E? Is what you're e -Y, e -Y -D -E. Yeah. Okay, and you said, that you referenced that case for what purpose to say that because and what, that what happened in that case even if that that case is the building was built to complete code and passed every michigan inspection there was correct but and then there was weekend, damages because it collapsed it just collapsed i think that it goes fell. to his argument you don't have any damages yet no no i have damages because i have to rectify the situation and fix it well it right. that's the whole thing you have to prove that there is a situation to be fixed what is the situation that the nails you don't like the way the nails look that's what the situation is because you haven't pro provided us anything other than optics you don't like the way the nails look you believe that those nails could come out but you've not presented any evidence to show this is what's going to happen or because you can't give for expert testimony you could have brought someone to say no because the way these were placed uh it's likely that this roof is not going to last and this is it's got to be fixed and this is how much it's going to cost to fix it because you're not entitled if i if i believe that they didn't place these nails correctly then you wouldn't be entitled to a completely brand new roof you're entitled to whatever the cost is to fix it and so we don't even have that because you didn't bring the evidence for that i have to ask the estimate but it's not good to use right the, the estimate it's hearsay because you need the person you need you need an expert in here to explain what this estimate was and how he came about that. Otherwise, that objection hearsay is going to come in and for court rules, I have to grant it. And then outside of that, uh, that person needs to explain what what was wrong about this. We don't even know what was wrong from an expert's standpoint, um, or if this is from what you're telling me. If I have to look at this, this, I don't see anything wrong with this roof. You said it as aesthetically. There's nothing aesthetically. It doesn't, yeah, it looks but fine. right, exactly. And so good. the only thing that I could see from the even the pictures you provided is that these nails are coming through. Um, and I agree, it's that's not pretty. But that just because I think it's not pretty doesn't mean that that wasn't um, built to last or that it wasn't appropriate. I don't know that, and I needed an expert to tell me that. Okay. Your Honor, as it pertains to whether or not we adjourn to have this individual attend the hearing, I hate to waste additional time, but- I'm going to review this regardless. Yeah, no doubt. I was but, saying that you can refresh his recollection during Oh, uh, yeah, I have, the, I have the testimony here uh, pulled up to some degree that I think it relates, um, and I can tell the court. And I can, I can 612 him off the record, and, and give, I actually have a copy for him if he wants it. But I didn't disagree with you saying that, I'm just saying that, like, 
I, I didn't know that I needed them today. I didn't know that what this was going to happen. What did you think you need them, sir? I don't know. We've been in here 14 times. But today's I, your trial. Is it going to all be done today? I don't know. Absolutely. I don't know. What we did a said? joint pretrial yeah. statement. We did a joint pretrial. That was rude. He passed you some tissue because you're in tears. That was not rude. And if we're going to go become combative, uh, I can end it now. It. Not being okay, so here's the thing. Um, today was your trial. We get we we had a whole ordeal about the joint. I remember that doing the joint pretrial statement because you refused to talk to them. I had to bring you guys in here. Do you remember that? Oh, that joint pretrial statement told you we were going to have a trial and how long the trial was going to be. It didn't say you were going to have a three-day trial. Why would this take three days? A couple hours is what I anticipate this to happen. This was supposed to be finished today. You're supposed to bring your evidence today. You were told you bring your evidence on the day of trial and that you turn over your exhibits no later than seven days prior to trial. That was what you were told. And so no one's hiding the eight ball from you. We told you. You didn't bring the witness. And apparently, even in your deposition, you were advised that you would need to present this witness um, for the for the court. And you still didn't bring a witness. And then it sounds like, and I don't know, that even if you did present him, sir, he's not licensed. That's if he's say. not if we that's if, your say too, though. I that's what said, that's why I said I don't know. Yeah. If you bring if you get this guy here in the next hour and he sits there and I find out that he's not licensed, what do you think he's gonna say? He's gonna to object to his ability to give that expert testimony because he doesn't have the he doesn't have the appropriate experience to do that. If you want to, while I go review this, go and, and call and talk to this guy and find out if he's licensed, that's your case to prove, not mine. It's up to you. I'm gonna go review this evidence. Um, so you have at least 15 minutes. Okay, we're back on the record in the matter of fire versus Zane. And um, Mr. Pray, I don't know, was it your intention to try to get your witness here? I was trying, yeah. And you've not been successful? Not gotten an answer yet. Okay, so today was the date and the time that was scheduled for trial. Um, and having been properly noticed, the court was trying to grant as much leniency as possible to allow you to bring that witness. But if he's not been responsive, uh, it is an unreasonable and undue burden and uh, disadvantage to the other party to set this out because you didn't properly bring your witness when you were told that today was the date for the trial and you were noticed that you would need to bring any witnesses, including expert witnesses, uh, to trial. Um, I reviewed the evidence uh, and I reviewed the defendant's uh, motion. Um, and uh, this is the issue that it boils down to uh, the breach of contract. Again, uh, the court's theme or viewing the breach as twofold, uh, or what you perceive to be the breach as twofold, I should say. Uh, you're perceiving uh, the placement of the nails as a breach, as well as the lack of cleanup and removing the uh, or replacing the eaves trough, which you later stated that the eaves trough wasn't a major issue for you, but provided some level of completeness for you. Um, and so uh, 
it was your responsibility because you have the burden to bring evidence to support uh, your claim that uh, the placement of these nails uh, presents a breach, meaning that this is not craftsmanship that's appropriate, um, that these were not properly placed. I have no reason to believe that these are not properly placed, appropriately placed, and that's why you need to bring a witness that has some expertise to tell the court otherwise, because we have a licensed contractor um, that pulled a license to do this work. And you did cite some case law uh, to support your position, and that's the I case. But that, again, is a situation where even after inspecting, inspections had passed, the building collapsed. So now you see there's damage. You've not presented any damages. Uh, what I perceive is you don't like the way this looks, uh, but based on your testimony, which is that you don't, you're not having any leaks, you're not having any missing shingles, there's no issue with the plywood, um, you're not showing me where this falls below the grade of the appropriate craftsmanship that was provided. So uh, that portion of your claim, it's, it has to be denied um, for no cause because you've not presented any evidence to support that. Even as I look at these pictures, everything looks to me like it's supposed to look. Uh, when I look or consider the issue as to the cleanup, uh, I agree with your position that if you contract to have labor done, that the cleanup is, should be a part of that labor. However, when I look at the only thing that I have that tells me what your agreement was, um, which is labor um, only, A, I think they're entitled to dump fees. Where did you think or how did they discard of all of the things that came off of your roof? They should not have to eat that cost. That's a cost that should be carried uh, by the homeowner unless you had it included in your contract, which this was for labor only, dump fees would not be included, that's your responsibility. Uh, that then leaves us with $1,000 that you never paid, correct? Is that a yes? Correct, yes. Okay, and so I don't value a cleanup, at least based on what I'm looking at, to cost $1,000. Uh, so if I consider that they are actually at a loss, not you, because they didn't get the thousand dollars plus the four three ninety seven, um, which is, means that they're still in the whole one thousand three ninety seven sixty, and you did have to clean it up yourself, but you didn't have to pay the remaining balance. Again, I don't see that there's been any issue with the craftsmanship workmanship that you presented and you don't have a witness or any other evidence that could be properly submitted to the court to dispute that this is not appropriate. So because of that, I have to find in a no cause of action, meaning in favor of the defense, uh, there's no cause of action. So you will not get any recovery uh, based on what you're seeking. You did originally file a counterclaim. I don't know if it's your intention to still move forward. I don't want to draw without prejudice that counterclaim this time. Okay, the counterclaim is withdrawn, and can I get an order from you? Sure. Um, no cause. And withdrawn the counterclaim without prejudice. I'll get one presented probably tomorrow morning, if that's okay. Uh, thank you. And then I want to return everybody's exhibits. Your Honor, I would just say for the record that we did do a uh, Offer of judgment in advance with the no cost finding. We're going to preserve, or at least preserve the option to file a motion for attorney's fees. Uh, on this case, I just would love to correctly reflect that. I'm not presenting the motion at this time. I'll just show in a written form that's so appropriate, seeking the return of attorney's fees wasted at trial. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that is noted for the record. And Mr. Dane, if you could get these exhibits. Yeah, I wrote, thank you. Yes, please. And these are the plaintiffs on the right, and then yours are on the left. That's for the court record. And that concludes today. Any additional matters for today's record? From Professor, I think free time. Any questions, sir? I'm assuming that's enough. Okay, you're all set. Actually, I do have one question. So, is like so. 
both cases are dismissed. He's withdrawn his counterclaim against right. you. That's without prejudice, meaning we didn't litigate it. So he does have the right to still bring that as a separate case and serve you with the lawsuit, is what he's saying. And that he has the right to do that because it wasn't litigated and decided on. And then he's also um, saying that there's the potential that he can file under the court rule for attorney's fees um, because there was a no pause. So if that's happened, if, if he files for that, you'll also be served for that and then we'll have a hearing for that. What else? I'm not advising you what you're supposed to do. I'm just explaining what he was saying. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's state your name for the record. Anthony Pryor. Okay, today's the date and time and set for a motion uh, for attorney's fees, uh, which the court has. However, there was not a judge's copy filed. Uh, so it was just stuck in the file. And then I do have a copy of your written response. Did you give a copy or service or a copy on yes, Mr. Zaney? Mr. Zaney, did you get a copy of this response? Your Honor, we got a copy of this response. It was improperly served on my secretary, um, but she gracefully had forwarded it to my attention. And Mr. Pryor, I'm not sure why he would send it to her, but that's how it went. I did receive it, did review this scribble, and I'm um, prepared to proceed. Okay, you can make your motion on the record. Thank you, Your Honor. Today, as the court indicated, is our motion for attorney's fees uh, pursuant to an offer of judgment in particular. Uh, as the court's aware, the procedural history, I'm sure uh, we've outlined it in our motion pretty exactly, but inevitably we get to trial, we get an order of no cause against uh, Mr. Pryor. Leading up to trial, well in advance for 28 days of trial, on June 3rd in particular, my office provided uh, by personal service an uh, offer of judgment to Mr. Pryor. Mr. Pryor rejected that offer of judgment um, verbally, but I think uh, by failing to respond in writing. Um, during the course of that, we go to trial. As indicated, we get a no cause. Uh, so therefore the average offer is exceeded, uh, hasn't been exceeded. We ended up in a better position uh, and ultimately present this motion pursuant to MCR 2.405. Uh, I've outlined the timeline because this court rule has very, I think, specific as aspects of it. We filed this motion uh, within the appropriate period after the judgment was entered uh, and it presented it to the court. The standard for issuing the attorney's fees um, is outlined in the court rule, but I think it also develops under the theory of reasonableness and actual. The first step is for the court to determine actual cost under paren three. Um, we've provided a court with a, a statement of costs uh, under Exhibit D. We provided the court with an affidavit from me under Exhibit F. These two affidavits, I think, uh, the affidavit and the, uh, the Exhibit D articulate what actual expenses, expenditures by virtue of time and costs we've, uh, we've incurred. And I did only provide the court from the date of the offer of judgment, June 3rd, to the date of trial. Uh, and I think it may include drafting the motion. Now, these fees, I believe, are, are actually, these are actual, but there's also the reasonableness criterion. There, there was work that had to be performed in preparation of trial. I have an hourly rate of $400 per hour. I believe based on the uh, bar study from last year, the 2023 economic study uh, and survey, which is our exhibit E, I fell, I fall at $400 an hour well within the parameters of reasonableness given my experience uh, in handling cases such as this and more uh, complex cases as my number of years in my location, all of which has been uh, really developed in the motion. If the court needs any uh, additional inquiry of me or has any questions that I can answer, I'd be more than happy to. But ultimately, it comes down to this request, Judge, 33.95 hours from June 3rd to the date of the motion costs, uh, which at $400 become $13,580. Costs in the amount of $2,832.44, reflective of the deposition and the trial prep uh, costs, they're articulated in our affidavit. The total request here today is $16,412.44. I believe, again, it's reasonable and actual, and it's appropriate for the court to enter given the court rule and case law provided. 
Okay, so you can respond with your response. Okay. Um, I'm Anthony Fryer, uh, pro se plaintiff that filed a case against uh, the defendant here um, in regards to a matter with my roof, which I believe is well understood here. Um, I wrote this answer. Is that what you want me to read? The exact answer that I wrote, or are you want me to just tell you? You can do it um, however you prefer. Okay. This is your time to make a record. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm requesting that the attorney's fees for the or the motion for the attorney's fees from the defendant's attorney be dismissed with prejudice, with prejudice for multiple reasons. Uh, please notice that the settlement agreement on six three that he's trying to speak of, saying that he requested that I settle for six hundred and fifty dollars, was actually stated in quotations to me in that agreement, which would mean I owe him six hundred fifty dollars when I'm taking him to court. And so I wasn't in agreement with that. And he knew that it was just uh, it was like. He didn't think I was smart enough to know that the quotations meant that I would owe him. And I really did when I read it. And so I ignored it because I was there for the deposition. Um, I was uh, I wasn't in agreement to that because of my claim has merit and because it wasn't frivolous. I request that they be denied in the matter as there wasn't any contract that allowed for attorney's fees. We signed no contract that said he would get attorney's fees if we had a disagreement in this matter for when he was working on my roof. Um, Why would he need to put that in a contract? Well, I'm just saying within, a, with, within court, most with some, contracts, if you sign he a cited, contract, You got his motion. He cited court, the court rules, correct? Yeah. The, and and the court rule says or outlines when and how you can make a motion for attorney's fees. It doesn't say anything about it needs to be part of a contract, does it? Well, I mean, I'm just saying in most cases, if you're I not had answering a contract my, You're not answering them, my questions. Right. Does it say that? I don't. It doesn't say that. I don't okay. believe it does say that. Okay. But what I understand is that in most cases with a, a contractor and a consumer, uh, there would be a need to be a clause in there for attorney's fees. That's what I thought. But, you think that um, most contracts need a clause to say that you can get attorney's fees if you sue? If there was a disagreement, I mean, most contracts would have. Uh, some somewhere. contracts will talk about how you can resolve a matter right, right. maybe uh trial versus arbitration or right. mediation some some may some do not it's not a requirement you absolutely don't have to put a requirement as to uh or a clause as to attorney's fees because right. the michigan court rules provide for it so i'm not sure but I, i'm not an attorney i'm not a judge obviously you know that i know that i'm, I'm just a regular person that wasn't happy with the job that was done in my room. But um, I mean, you could also see that, I mean, I believe he's overreaching his professional abilities and in, in, in rights. I mean, he's like literally like the deposition itself was an abuse towards me about my past. It had nothing to do with the roof. I spent three hours at this man's office being interrogated about my past, not about anything to do with a job at my house or my presence or my uh, my uh, my residence with this roof had zero to do with any of it whatsoever. Okay. You had a right to bring an attorney with you to right. any deposition. I you got had, hit by don't a talk car. over me. You had the right to bring any attorney with you to the deposition. You had a right to make objections to questions that you thought were abusive or violated your rights in any way. You proceeded with the deposition. The court was not even made aware that there was a deposition until after it, was ha after it happened. So the, talk over me one more time and we don't have to have a hearing. Uh, so I so to come now and say that the reason why um, you don't believe he's entitled to attorney's fees when he is in fact an attorney, he's a sole practitioner, he does has an hour, have an hourly rate. Um, you know, you didn't need to bring me a little bit more substance than the fact that you didn't like the settlement offer. And you also didn't like the questions at the deposition because he also highlights uh, that in his motion that there was an offer to settle and you also have the right to counter offer and settle. And did you counter offer to try to resolve this short of a trial? I can't hear you on no. that. Okay, okay. You can continue with your argument as to why you don't believe that he's entitled to attorney's fees for his work.
I request that it be dismissed because there was with prejudice because there was no pre-approval from the court for this excessive amount of inflated hours and fees for his defense from the deposition time until the trial time. I don't believe that 80% of his preparation was needed for any of the case. If he's got so much experience and time here in the court, he shouldn't need to prepare so well. So that's a good argument. Did you want to respond to that? It was necessary because we believe this case was frivolous and that Mr. Uh, Pryor was presenting information in a fraudulent way. Uh, and, and we had to anticipate the unknowns in this case, Your Honor. That deposition was three hours uh, because of the difficult nature of answering questions and the information garnered that in conjunction with the preparation. I have an obligation to my client that requires full preparation. Every bit of that and probably there's probably time that wasn't recorded as it relates to trial preparation is distinctly different than anything else. As the court's well aware of trial preparation, you have to make sure you have your law. We put a memorandum together for the court as it relates to the issues relevant to this case to streamline this. Uh, in addition, we showed up well prepared with necessary witnesses, including an expert that we had ready to go where Mr. Pryor failed to produce his witness. And he was warned about this. This was part of trial. He was warned about this by the court. He was warned about this during his deposition. And he still showed up unprepared. I had to prepare because I have an ethical duty to prepare, a professional duty to prepare. And every aspect that I presented was a required obligation of preparation. And I think, frankly, quite the opposite. There was probably more work done than it's recorded. Well, I am going to first say I... I... I issued a, a pre I signed a pretrial statement. I didn't uh, authorize expert witnesses. It said there that you you said that none was necessary. So that's what we put in the pretrial statement. So why is it now an expert witness conference and that he was necessary for this? If you told me at the pretrial that there was not a need for one. Actually, Your Honor, I think at the pretrial, what happened, I wasn't present at the pretrial. There was a confusion on a motion, and the court went forward with the pretrial uh, with Mr. Pryor, and I advised via email that I wasn't attending. So, uh... Are you Mr. Pryor? Yes, ma'am. On the record in the matter... Of Anthony James Pryor versus Simon Zaney, file number 23-02133-EC. Uh, state your name for the record. Anthony James Pryor. Uh, Mr. Zaney is present via Zoom. Please state your name for the record. Simon Zaney, Z-E-I-N-E. -E. Okay, today was the date and the time that was set. Oh, I think I have it here. So I have it, Sean. I'll take that file right there. Oh, that paper right there. Thank you. Uh, today was the date and the time that was set uh, for a motion uh, to set aside a dismissal. Mr. Pryor, you filed a motion to set aside dismissal. Say so you came before the court. This court, I believe this says ex explaining the above said claim is meritorious and asked the court to reinstate this claim and set it for a new date. Yesterday, when logging into Zoom, I entered the room ID and said, once my name appeared on the screen, I'd be admitted to the hearing. That didn't happen. So I came to the court. I'm not sure what that word says, but the, but the dismissal was already put through. I have pictures and videos. Okay, so uh, when your case is dismissed, you did have a court date that was scheduled on November 21st. Looks like you came the next day and filed this motion to set aside. And it, you attempted to log into Zoom, you said? Yeah, I was actually on Zoom that morning, uh, the day of the court hearing. And I, I said, I said your name at the bottom of the screen. And I could probably do it again right now to show you. 
um, I had the correct information according to the court clerk that was out in the hallway, but it just was, it just said at, as soon as my name appeared on the screen that I would be admitted to the room and then it never did that. So about 20, 30 minutes into the hearing time, I jumped in my truck with it on my phone and I drove down here and came upstairs and the courtroom was already dark and you guys were already gone. It was a pretty quick, I guess that was one of the last cases or something probably, but he just said that I had to come back the next day and request that it be reset. And I, I mean, I, no intentions on missing it at all whatsoever. I mean, it's a pretty serious case in my, in my eyes. Yeah, well, the way our Zoom works is if you're in our Zoom waiting room, it pops up and tells me someone's in the Zoom waiting room and we admit everybody in the waiting room. Um, and if you were on time, you would have been admitted uh, and if we didn't know what your name was, because we admit you, even if you don't put your name in there, anybody in the waiting room gets admitted. So you did not join my courtroom that day because we never saw you. And, and, and I give a grace period. So that means that by the time I finished my docket for that day, you had not appeared. So in order to have a, a dismissal set aside, you got to give me two things. You got to give me a good cause as to why you missed court, which I believe you have good cause, but you also got to give me a meritorious defense. And so you believe you have a, a, a good case in your eyes. I don't want you to get into your proofs because that's not what today's date is for. Uh, this is, and I know nothing about this case, obviously. So this is, you're suing Mr. Zaney in this matter? Yes, ma'am. And you believe that you have a a valid or meritorious case, I, I presume, correct? Yes, ma'am. And this is over the replace of a roof? Yes, ma'am. Okay, no, I'm not So it's a breach of contract is what you're alleging? Um. Breach of contract or uh, poor craftsmanship, possibly a combination of both. Um, there was some cleanup work that was never completed. Um, and upon me going into it myself in the attic, um, I then opened up a whole can of other worms of other problems. And you so knew that was a result of the, the services that Mr. Zaney was supposed to provide? Correct. Okay. Mr. Zaney, did you want to respond to the motion to set aside the dismissal? Um, well, uh, to be honest with you, Your Honor, I would say um, I was here. I was present at this. I did not see a list who's in the courtroom with us, and uh, I didn't see him. Um, I, I don't believe this is a um, accurate detail of the uh, what work we did and the understanding um, of what was to be done on the roof was very clear. Um, and I would ask, that, you know, if we do uh, move forward with this, that I be allowed to get an attorney to help me facilitate, uh, you know, getting this taken care of. I'm going to grant the motion to set aside. I do believe that you have a good cause and Based on what you've told me, it sounds like you have a legitimate complaint. Um, I don't know what the merits of the complaint is. I guess we'll find out as the case progresses. So we'll go ahead. Uh, you don't need to show me the Zoom. I know people have issues with Zoom all the time. I screenshotted it though that morning just to show you that day, just to show you I was sitting there and it showed your name and everything. Oh, I'm sure. What was time was it? Um, it says uh, 2 10 p.m. Yeah, we would have been in here. So I, I don't know what would have happened, but I'm going to tell you what. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time that there's been a technological yeah, issue. Yeah. So that, that's why I said from the beginning that I believe you had good cause, yes, uh, but I just needed your meritorious defense. So I'm going to set aside the dismissal. Uh, this matter will be set for a pretrial date. Uh, and then, Mr. Zaney, you have an opportunity to uh, hire an attorney and they'll file their appearance. And if there's an issue with the date that's set, they'll let us know and we can rearrange that date. Okay. I just Thank have you, one George. request. What's your request? Uh, his uh, he has family that's an attorney that it not his family. You don't get to pick someone's okay. attorney. I'm just saying. He has a brother that's an attorney that... Yeah, we're very familiar with uh, yeah. with. Right, he, right. he was so in the courtroom sure. yesterday or today. We don't get to pick his right. attorney. That's up to him. Thank you, Judge. He has that's the right funny. to counsel. He has the right to counsel. I know. You have the right to one too if you want to go and hire your attorney. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll give you a notice to it. Uh, actually, no, civil will send you a uh, next court date. You're all set for today, sir. I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zaney. What's this um, young lady saying here? Oh, actually, sir, Mr. Pryor. I need you back up here. I forgot I had another matter for you. On uh, record, the city of Lansing versus Anthony James Pryor. File number is 23L2781391. In this matter, it appears you are in warrant status before Judge Flores for failure to appear for your pre trial. Improper plate. You were supposed to be before him on. No, no. I want. You were supposed to be before Judge Flores on August twenty first. Uh -huh. And I went before him, and also the city attorney, um, or the prosecutors, or one or the other. I'm not sure exactly which one was in the courtroom. Um, and they were setting it aside because I have an issue with Carvana. I bought a car in. September. I don't want to hear any of the term. Uh, it's not even my case. I don't care less about that. Uh, you're just in, you're just in before the court and you have a warrant so i have to address it so I, all that stuff you want to share you got to share it before judge floor is not me yeah, i already did uh, no well not according to his paperwork according, you're in warrant status you failed to appear you originally had a court date on the 31st of july this looks like he didn't set it for august 21st and that you failed to appear you cut me off one more time Sorry. Uh, you did originally look like have a warrant that he quashed. That was the July warrant. You failed to appear in August. I emailed the prosecutor all the information. I don't care what you emailed. You got to come to court if you have a court date. Yes, ma'am. I would. I was told that it would be removed and I wouldn't have to show up. I just needed to email them the proof of what was going on with Carvana and finance the car here in the state of Michigan. I, I thought I told you I don't really, no, I don't, I, I, but this is not my case. It's I don't very, want to know any of the, the, the issues. I just want to advise you that you missed a court date, okay? So what do I have to do? You're going to get a new court date. You have to appear for the court date, yes, okay? Yes, ma'am, I would. That's what you have yeah, to do. Yeah, for sure. It's, Are they going to give us a new date? What do we need? I've had that car for three years and it's been here in Michigan for sure. I don't, they're fighting Sir, I don't want to hear about it. I know it's a disaster. January 9th at 10 a.m. January 9th at 10 a.m. You'll be next door at Judge Flores, and you can feel free to share all those things that you want to get off your chest. But we don't want it on our record, okay? Because you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you. And frankly, it just is not appropriate for you to be sharing all that right now, okay? So we'll get you a copy of your notice to appear, and then you can leave here. Remember, you re you report to court sure for us January 9th, okay? Yes, no problem. Thank you. Hey friends, this is kind of a crossroads. Do we continue down the rabbit hole and head to Judge Flores's court or do we jump back to Judge Simmons to the main hearing? Yeah, I know. Always take the rabbit hole. 781391. That's the city of Lansing versus Anthony Pryor. Will the parties please indicate their presence for the record? Ms. Williams. Good morning, Your Honor. Assistant City Attorney Amani Williams appearing on behalf of the city of Lansing. And sir, you are Anthony Pryor, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. This is the time is set for a pretrial in the matter. Ms. Williams, how are we proceeding? Your Honor, the city moves to dismiss at this time. And I believe this is on a ticket. I think so. Yes. Yeah. All right. So with that understanding, and it is on a ticket, let me make just double check. I think it is. Find it. Hello. Sorry. Uh, with a with a on this file, 23L278-1391, since it's on a ticket, the people will move to dismiss. It's granted. It's granted without prejudice. People could reissue if they choose to, but for our purposes today, the case is dismissed. Anything else for the record? 
Uh, Miss Williams. Hi, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pryor. No, thanks. You should thank be all you. set. Thank you, sir. All right. You guys have a good day. You too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. I, I respect that. I noted that. I take care. I take reference to that. But I would tell you during the course of his deposition and consistently the issues herein was the need for that expert that he had. So if he had presented an expert, I would have had to rebut that expert. In addition, I would need to be prepared by virtue of the expert, because the court knows I'm not a roofer, to consult with that individual to make sure I'm answering the right questions. Uh, and again, if I look at that, I don't think there was uh, an exorbitant amount of time associated with the obligation, I think, to consult. And additionally, I think the requirements of case law require attorneys to consult experts in fields in which expertise is required. And therefore, uh, I had the ethical, again, ethical and professional duty to consult, regardless of the scheduling order, uh, that expert. Uh, at, you were present because I distinctly remember you all being placed in a room and then there was some back and forth and I had to do it on the record. That was the first. You all, you all couldn't agree. I, I don't disagree with the court on that one, Your Honor. Um, you're right, uh, because we're he was in person via Zoom. And then the court adjourned it for 30 days to get his pleadings in order because that was the issue then. Uh, and then there was a motion I had presented for, um, I think, a matter of default, which I just thought that was up that day, not recognizing the pretrial. Again, he's not billed for any of this time because that predated the June 3rd date. Anything we presented to the courts, June 3rd and forward. And so the, the, the substance, the court's accurate in that pretrial. The court's accurate. There was a second uh, pretrial that the court issued a pretrial order and said no experts. I don't dispute any of that. Um, but I wasn't at that one because that was the day in which I presumed it was the motion which I withdrew and the court subsequently issued that that order. Fine. I respected it and I abided by it. And what the court will note as part of my prep preparation material is adherence to that court order. We, we had to exchange exhibits in advance of trial. I exchanged witness lists. All those documents are part of the preparation to make sure I'm putting valid witnesses on that are prepared and necessary. And we exchanged that material, again, in accordance with that very same order. What did we get in response to that? What did we get in preparation for trial from the plaintiff? Nothing, which again, requires, I think, additional preparation for the unknown uh, on my behalf, respectfully. Do you have a copy of your deposition transcript? I do. We also can order a video, Your Honor, given the nature of the uh, kind of uh, behavior of the plaintiff, we had a video deposition. Uh, and that I can tell you, I can pull it up. I don't have it here in front of me. I'm pulling it up on Dropbox if the court would just uh, give me a moment. And it was identified as one of our trial exhibits, Your Honor. I have a full copy of that, Your Honor. That deposition uh, transcript is 196 pages. Oh, let's see it. You say you do have a copy of the transcript? I do, Your Honor. I'm here right now. I have it available to search if necessary. It's on my phone. Okay, I, I just, because his argument is that he found the questions to not align with the issues before the court and that they were a waste of his time. And so I'd like to have a review of that to see if his concerns are valid. Sure, I could share with you. I, I don't think that would be the issue, but Your Honor, can I share a, a digital copy with the court uh, PDF and I can share with Ms. Nash? Uh, that would be wonderful if you could do that. That's your honor. Yes. Earlier, he had said he didn't know why I sent this to his secretary. That's because that's where I got some of their responses from it. So I replied to that. I get it. But you also you didn't know. file your response to the day. So you got to file. You, 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 I don't. So that means I saw this when I walked I on the bench. I, I'm sorry. And I can explain that to you. I don't need you to explain it. But we, we, to, to, his argument, there's been a lot of delay because you've not followed the court rules. You brought the lawsuit, you're required, and I told you from the very beginning, if you bring a lawsuit, I recognize that you are representing yourself pro se, you still have to follow the court rules. The court gave a lot of leniency as it relates to that. That doesn't take away from the time that it, it 
is expended for attorneys re, uh, scheduling out and coming back and forth. Then Mr. Zaney appeared. I'm looking at the bill. I don't know if you looked at it. I don't even, I don't even see before you a copy of what he, what he filed. But for example, I know I, there were motions and I signed an order for the pretrial statement on the pretrial order in April. And there were motions in March and prior to that signing of the pretrial statement. And he's not billed for any of that. Uh, I, I also uh, know that Mr. Uh, Zaney's fee is consistent with the state bar uh, standards and that he does, uh, he's, the bill he's posting here is what he would charge the general public. I just don't know that that's what he would charge to his brother. That's a whole separate issue, uh, but that is his, his going rate. Um, do I believe that it, it's, I think you make a valid argument, Mr. Pryor, about uh, the amount of time it should have taken him to prepare for this matter. He's trying to bill here for 34 hours of preparation. If I may, Your Honor. You may. Uh, I don't think capsulizing is just preparation. It's diligence in the case uh, because it starts from June 3rd and it transitions into true trial prep. And this isn't an issue of just true trial prep. It's from the dates in which we made that offer. So it encompasses, I think, a lot more. Uh, yes, the focus was on preparation. Uh, and then just lastly, if I could just clarify a point that Mr. Pryor made that I never got to. Uh, he indicated there was a matter of the way the offer was presented. This offer was presented consistent with court rule in writing, and it's attached as Exhibit B. There was no, uh, no way, no ambiguity here. It was offer of entry of judgment in favor of the plaintiff in a specific amount, in his favor. So to try and present to the court something contrary, I think is disingenuous at best, which has been consistently the challenge. Uh, with Mr. Pryor's representation. So I did- Is that think, offer made in writing to you? It was. What made you think that there was some um, trickery going on? The amount I... was in quotations. And I know what that when that you mean? put a dollar amount in quotations, like if I look into my bank statement, if it's in quotations, it's in a negative. That's that not- below, Sir, that that's not that what that means. Him. That's that would, that, you're wrong. Okay, that's not I what that means. You're wrong, but that's what I thought. Uh, did and he, when I asked him- Do you have a copy? I so what do you in the file is. I didn't bring the whole file with me. Okay. I didn't. Because why? We went through this before. Why would you not bring your file to court? I just, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. When you're writing, especially legal writing, and I don't know what he wrote, but I could imagine that he probably, if it was 600, typed out 600 in words, and then he has to put the 600 in quotations because that's how you write. It's not trickery, sir. I misunderstood his offer. You misunderstand a lot of things, and it's reasonable because you're trying to navigate a process that you're not familiar with. Uh, but I advise you early on, you might want to get some assistance of counsel if you want to move forward with this. You might want to counsel with an attorney uh, so that you know that you're following the rules properly because navigating the civil litigation is not easy. And so... I'm going to review this bill. Uh, oh, you'll be sent me. I'm Can also I make going a to statement to my defense on that. Now. You may. I didn't hire an attorney because I got hit by a car in February and I haven't worked until just like three weeks ago, starting back working. So, yeah, I couldn't afford to hire an attorney for this matter. And then, if you notice, in my other case, I had. I don't want to hear anything about your other case. Right. I have representation for that. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm I just saying. I your, know, your other case has nothing love, to do with this file. I would love to have had an attorney here. I would love to have had an attorney in this case because I believe the matter would have been completely opposite if I did, but I couldn't afford it at the time. Your Honor, if I could just reply to the other portion of his statement. Okay. I'd ask the court when reviewing the transcript to pay particular attention to page 100. On page 100, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Pryor referenced and recognizes uh, as part of our discussion uh, that he was offered a settlement agreement. It was clarified for the amount approximately, and he just ignored that. Um, and he was explained the consequences of the offer at that time. Uh, this was something that um, I, I want the court to be aware of. Uh, and I'll, I'll rest on oh. that point. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pryor, you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, 
Thank you. I, uh, any further argument you want to provide for the court, sir? I just want to apologize. I didn't bring the file because I was busy taking my daughter to school and I didn't have time to go home with you. Okay. If, uh, but you knew you had this court date before yes. today. Girl. Yes, I did. But yes. I didn't have it in my truck because every time I turn a corner, I got so much stuff, it falls over everywhere. So I took it out of my truck and I didn't have it in my truck. Okay. I'm going to set this for a date. I need time to review the transcript and I'm going to uh, comb through this comb through this uh, itemization that Mr. Zaney's provided. Uh, you've not, sir, given me or gone through, I don't know if you've gone through that or if other than the, the deposition, you've never, you've not pointed to anything that I believe you have particular concerns about. Um, so I need to just go through to see the reasonableness. I believe that he is due attorney's fees because attorneys don't work for free. Our, it's it, it, it turned, that That's a, a, a misconception. Um, and it's a cross that every single attorney in the United States of America bears. As soon as they become licensed, their families and friends want free legal advice and free services, and they don't work for free. Just like I can't come to your job and ask you for free stuff. His job is legal work and his legal expertise. And if he's taking his, his um, time and he's using his resource and he's using his education, he should be paid for it. I will make a determination as to what I believe is reasonable and equitable in this particular matter after reviewing the transcript, as well as going through the 33.95 hours uh, submitted by uh, Mr. Zaney. I'll give you a date, the next available date for my review. He's gonna be here on October 3rd. Uh, he's already gonna be here October 3rd. Does that date work for you, Mr. Zaney? It does, Your Honor. At 1.30. October 3rd at 1.30. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll get you a notice to appear for this as well, okay? Um, you're all set for today on this. Thank you. Good day. Thank you. Yes, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Edward Zaney on behalf of Simon Zaney. Prior. Okay. Uh, today was the date that uh, we reset uh, hearing on the uh, defense counsel's motion for attorney's fees. The court uh, was a review of a transcript from portions of discovery, a deposition to be clear, uh, that took place as part of preparation for uh, this litigation, as well as a review of the activities uh, report or expense and the reasonableness of the attorney's fees bill if there was a motion for a total amount of 33.95 hours at a total of $16,412.44. The last time that we were here, there were some concerns expressed by you, Mr. Pryor, about the reasonableness or the nature of the questions that was posed at the deposition uh, and the time, the reasonableness of the timeline or the time how long it took for that deposition to be completed. I think it took about two and a half hours. I reviewed the questions. I didn't particularly find any concern with the questions. Um, I think that the time frame for a deposition typically is about an hour and a half to, for this type of issue, two hours for this type of issue. I think it was slightly longer because I, in my observation, believe that there weren't a lot of direct responses given, but a lot of back and forth. Uh, but I don't, I didn't see anything in there that I, I believe to be inappropriate, the questions that were asked. I think there were a lot of questions that went into your background as it relates to other litigation. I can only surmise as to what uh, the uh, relevance to this would be. It could have been for credibility. It could have been for uh, motive. It could have been for trying to ascertain um, whether or not, because at the time there was a counterclaim, your ability to pay. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, I didn't see anything that was grossly outside the nature or scope of litigation. So I, I think that the uh, deposition questions were appropriate. And I think the timing was reasonable, slightly longer 
primarily because you didn't want to answer the questions. There was some back and forth in there. Um, and so if attorneys have to keep re-answering questions or retelling you not to talk over them, that could take a little bit longer. Uh, nonetheless, I reviewed the report. Uh, I also reviewed uh, the rule, the court rule as it relates to attorney's fees, as well as the rules of professional responsibility as to what attorneys should be doing and cannot do when they're making a request for attorney's fees. And there are certain factors that must be considered by the court when making a ruling as to attorney fees. And I think I made it clear before that I do believe uh, that uh, the relationship between the attorney and the client is at stake. And the, the rules of professional responsibility agree with me in that regard. Uh, this is the brother of the uh, attorney that's being represented. Uh, Mr. Zaney, you have requested or billed a rate of $400. And I believe that you, based on the analysis that's provided by the 2023 Economics of Law survey results, as well as your practice experience, uh, I believe that you uh, are a attorney that can appropriately charge that rate. However, uh, the rules require that I consider the nature and the length of the professional relationship with the client. It is also required that I consider the nature of the case in and of itself. This was not a complex case. Uh, I don't believe even as it was billed for the time to draft the motion for attorney's fees, I thought it was excessive. Uh, do I think that you had to go and get new uh, research for your motion? No, I think that you file motions for attorney's fees probably commonly. You probably could have cut and paste the majority of your uh, research uh, into this motion. It's not a long, it's not really a long motion anyway. So I don't know that all of this time that's being spent was reasonable and necessary. I also think that the rate uh, of $400 was not a uh, reasonable as it relates to the relationship between the brother, two brothers uh, in business and other uh, facets, but in this particular case, a relationship, an attorney-client relationship, the rules of professional responsibility indicate that we know that when there is a history of relationship there, a negotiation of that attorney's uh, regular fee is more likely to be lower than what it normally would be. So do I think that 400 was reasonable? No. And so I'm not going to grant you a rate of 400 uh, per hour. I think that because this matter has been pending uh, since November 2023, we had multiple court dates. There were more than one motion filed on, on this matter uh, that uh, there was definitely a, a number of hours that were expended on this. Uh, the concern that the court does have about one of the expenses other than the uh, research or the time it took for research was uh, the expert uh, billings because I reviewed my order for discovery and I did not grant any expert. And so I don't understand why it would be reasonable for us to go into uh, a rabbit hole of expert trial uh, prep at the rate for, for, it looks like for four hours or almost four hours. There was no expert in this, at least there should not have been. This was a pretty uh, straightforward case and he's not, he did not pre present an expert. I know he presented some document about someone who came to see the roof, but I think that it could have easily have been flushed out uh, that there was no expert noted in the order for the court for this uh, pretrial order for discovery. And we know in district court discovery is uh, limited in scope unless otherwise noted in the order. The order stated here, we weren't having an expert witness. And you never even, you, you noted some witness, but you never called them. So as it relates to any uh, line items for experts, that won't be recoverable. Uh, so that need to be striped. I am going to also reduce the attorney fee uh, from 400 uh, to the median rate uh, that was indicated in the uh, Michi uh, State Bar of Michigan economic report. Uh, so that's to 325 an hour. 
So I'll let Mr. Zaney adjust his paperwork because there's a lot of line items there and I'm not gonna go through line by line to figure out exactly all the ones that were attached to any expert that needs to be addressed and removed. And then as it relates to the time it took for you to draft this motion, I found that to be a bit of excessive. I think you've built almost four hours. I don't know that it took you four hours to draft this. Uh, I think you could probably draft a federal motion in less time. Uh, so on a more complex issue, uh, if you are a attorney in that percentile uh, with the experience that you have, uh, this was a low level case for you. And I recognize it took time. I have said multiple times, I think you handled it, uh, this case just like any other professional would have. Uh, but understanding that there's a, a very close relationship uh, when it comes to the client attorney relationship, that's the, the, the fee will be adjusted because of that. I also want to cut that uh, time frame that it took to draft and uh, research for this motion. I want that cut in half as well. All the other expenses in the uh, bill I found to be appropriate. Uh, so I'll allow you to address that and then you can tell me uh, what the final amount is because I don't know if you have that in some kind of spreadsheet or something. Uh, I do, if, you can, if you're able to do that right now, I can go off the record, call another case, and then we can get those final figures. Yes, I'd like to do that, Your Honor. I'll get working on it right away. Okay, off the record, you can have a seat. Sir. Okay, uh, Mr. Zaney, were you still working or you need more time? I'm ready. I have it figured out. All right, back on the record in the matter of prior versus Zaney. Uh, Mr. Zaney, what adjustments do we have here? Your Honor, what I did when I heard the court talk about the motion prep, you wanted it cut in half, but uh, what I did was I also heard the court say it should have been only a couple hours. I attributed two hours to that work. So I took off the first four entries on page one of four of exhibit D from 817, 811, 810, and 85. That removed six hours and I, well, six and left two. So I removed four hours and billed it only for two hours total. So I did more than the half the court had requested. I removed the $600 in costs for the expert on that same page of the exhibit from 8-1. In addition, I removed a total of hourly work for the expert to be an additional two hours. Any communication with the expert I removed, which would be reflective on page, well, the first 600 is on page one, page two, the entry from 723 and 722, that's one hour. And then the next page from 719 and 717 is another hour. I removed both of those. So it reduced the total hours removed was six, reducing it to a total of 27.95 hours. There's a caveat, and I'll bring this to the court's attention to make a determination. I did indicate I charged uh, 0.75 for preparing witness fees and the where it does say there was an expert endorsement. I did not attribute that to the work of experts, but my witness list entirely. So if you would like me to remove that, please advise and I'll recalculate. Otherwise, I believe I've addressed points to uh, in full and full candor to the court as it relates to witnesses. If the court were to stick with my application or my reduction, 27.95 hours at the hourly rate approved by the court of 325 for a total of attorney's fees of $9,083.75, a reduction in the expenses from 2,832.44 minus the 600 for the expert, total of 2,232.44, the grand total $11,316.19. Okay, thank you. I'm satisfied uh, with the reductions that was made uh, and I will grant the request for attorney's fees in the amount stated on the record. Uh, can you produce an order? Yes, for sir. Attorney's and cost that that is. And you can send it through my file. Do you have any questions, sir? 
You're shaking your head. Does that an indication of no? Yeah, I don't. I have zero words as to what to say on how I can pay eleven thousand dollars to a defendant when in my case had it, it's it's not without merit. It's it's got. If I was to refile it, if I had an attorney, if I didn't take six months off from getting run over by a car, I would have been able to afford it by an attorney. It's not that I couldn't pay his brother the thirteen hundred dollars that he I owed him at the end of the job. I paid for everything in advance before he even ever showed up. I make decent. I have always made decent money and I've always done really well in life. I treat people with respect. I don't rob people blind. I, I change tires for next to nothing. I'm every day for the public. I go above and beyond for my people and my customers. I've I've done so much for them, even not even just in regards to this fruit for using them through business, just in life, just have helped them in multiple ways. Anytime they ever called on me on my service, I've always been there for them. So to go through this, it's affected me. It's, it's got me in a position where I don't even know what my next move will be. Like, that's where it makes me feel. I should not owe this man nothing. Well, what, uh, the $1,397.86 that he's trying to say that I owe him, $386 was added on after the contract was already complete, according to both of us. He should have been completing the job. And this is not a time him. for us to rehash no, the trial. I we, again, I put it on the record, this case was, it's almost a year from the time that this case initiated. Totally and so weird. you were advised multiple times that you probably want to seek counsel because court rules... The, it's not about you were the one who brought the lawsuit and if you were going to bring a lawsuit then you need to either reverse yourself with the court rules and the procedures so that you know how to move forward or you were going to have to hire you an attorney it's a civil matter if a attorney most attorneys will take a civil matter on a contingency fee meaning they see some merit and they think that they can get paid the same way he got paid after taking the case uh, they'll get they'll seek their attorney's fees and they'll get their money through through that. Nonetheless, uh, the court rules are the court rules and you did not prevail. There was also an opportunity for you to resolve this matter because he proffered an amount to you to resolve and settle this case uh, to which you didn't accept. And that's really what set him up to be able to request attorney's fees because there was a way to resolve it that didn't happen. And then you were then unsuccessful. If you were able to be successful with your claim, he would not be in this position to seek this amount of attorney's fees. So the court rules were clear as it relates to that. It's unfortunate. Uh, the if, if you had evidence that you believe would properly have supported your case, you didn't present it at the time of your trial. Uh, and so that's what puts you in a, in, a, in a very, very hard situation is because that's what the trial date was for. You were supposed to bring your evidence. There was too much. I didn't have the evidence or I left it here or uh, this person had it. Don't, any other questions for the record? Because I'm not going to be, when you talk, I checked myself to be quiet because I wanted to let you have a moment to re re relieve what was out, whatever was on your chest. But what I won't do when I'm talking is be cut off. This was the same thing I saw even when you were having your deposition and I saw the attorney being patient and explaining to you, we can't both talk. So I'll let you know. When I mean, when, when it's, I'm not talking, you're going to talk and you wanted him to let you know when you can talk. No one's going to have to let you know when we're talking, because if we're talking, you should know you shouldn't talk over us. But when a question is posed to you, then you should be able to know when to answer it. When you were talking, I listened. Now I'm talking. You want to cut me off. I heard your case. I spent way more time than this case should have required to resolve it. I gave you more time than necessary to try to bring your stuff in here. I gave you all kinds of allowances. That costs time. That costs time for the attorney. It costs time for the court. Uh, but you still didn't bring us what we needed on the date set for trial. You didn't even have this witness that you named. Uh, so the ruling was what it was because you weren't able to sustain your burden. It's your burden uh, to produce the evidence for the court to establish your cause. And you were unable to do that. And judgment was in favor of um, the defense in this matter and as a result there's now attorney's fees in the amount of eleven thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars
Can I ask one thing? Yes, you may. How could it go from him thinking he's going to settle with me, owing me money, which I misunderstood? I, I, I can't opine. I can't opine over. So the way overnight. negotiations work, it's not really up for the court to opine as to what. It could have just been value of his time. We'll give you $600 to make this go away. But it could be just a, a value of his time. I'm, we're going to give you this money to make you go away so that we don't have to deal with this. It could. There's a number of things that go into why um, defendants and or plaintiffs offer settlements. I was not there. I couldn't do it. I don't even know if you counter offered. It's not really germane. All I know is that there was an offer to settle and you refused to settle. I don't see anything where there you even countered. And so. I'm not trying to cut you off, but I, I didn't, I misunderstood when, when I went to his office for the deposition, I was very upset. I did not want to be there. I was supposed to be at a doctor's appointment for my car accident. And he said, if I didn't come, that I was going to be charged all this stuff. He was like, I got the emails. He basically threatened me that if I didn't come, that it was going to be a big problem. Sir, and you've so been I upset every up. time you've come. Yeah, you filed, because this is you filed, much. you filed, the, you, off, you filed the litigation. You and you file litigation that it comes with stress. It comes with paperwork. It comes with understanding these rules. And so you brought it, and every time you came to court, even when you came for the pretrial, I had to intervene. I shouldn't have had to intervene just for you to complete a joint pretrial statement, but I had to because of your attitude. I'm not dealing with it anymore. This case is done. You're all set. We're off the record, Your Honor, on this matter. We're off the record. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Are you threatening someone in my courtroom? Yeah. Are you threatening someone? Run? Run for what? I said we're done. Exit out the courtroom, sir, before you find yourself in contempt.